toss serve and uh, there you see BYU coach Lavelle Edwards Hawaii won the toss deferred to the second half so BYU is elected to receive you know you see guys do this more and more let's take a look at the series record here and boy that's a little misleading the last few years <laughs> the bows have really been tough on uh, the Cougars here in, in uh, the island last time they played here BYU probably should have won and gave it away last year they played in Provo Utah and Hawaii probably should have won but BYU pulled it out at the end well we hope you enjoyed you'll be up a little late but uh, we'll all sleep late tomorrow this is a good football game over here 82 degrees 74 percent of the humidity it is warm and humid tonight in Honolulu the storm the uh, hurricane that was west of the Big Island sort of petered out and they had expected some possible rain tonight but now there's no storm maybe a shower or two one thing to remember about Hawaii under Bob Wagner they have really worked at the kicking game all of the coaches work on special teams it's paid off for them box to Beal number 15 is back to kick off a sophomore and here's the kick to open the football game high it'll come down around the seven yard line is taken there to the 10 to the 15 up to the 20 yard line and the Cougars from BYU will take over right there as Mark Atawaya who's from here in the islands took that opening kickoff and ran it back out to the 20. And there you see that the starting quarterback for Brigham Young University John Walsh threw for over twenty seven hundred or thirty seven hundred yards last year for the BYU Cougars. So here's the first offensive play of the game Walsh a junior. One of a long line of outstanding quarterbacks at BYU. They'll run it on first down. That is Jamal Willis, number 29, and hit first of all by George Nunga. He's the junior out of Honolulu. Played under the name of Tupuola last year, but officially changed his name back to Nunga this year. Well, we got a penalty, and this should go, as you look at Jack Baker, this should go against Hawaii. It's a face mask. It is. For the Cougars along the line, for Pula, Hanshaw, Edwards, Pilgrim, and Herring. Edwards is. Wearing a face mask on the defense. 15 yards, first down. Edwards is uh, one of the team captains. Doman, Lewis, Willis, and Hamuli, Nowatsky. Now, Doman did not suit up tonight. He hurt his knee on Tuesday in practice. They had hoped he'd be able to play, but he will not. He wanted to play tonight, but he will not be able to go because of the knee injury. So after the 15 yard walk off the Cougars have a first down on the their own 36 yard line. Scissors play that's Atuaya slipping around to the right side gains about two maybe three yards. Junior Favai made the stop for the Hawaii Rainbows. Defensively there you see George Nonga and Ed Ripley Rod York. Uh, they have them not a lot of size but some pretty good experience Jeff uh, Brady who had played some offense thought of a who just made the tackle Ellis and Stewart they have some good linebackers then Anderson Henderson Ross and Odom Odom had some injury problems second down and eight for the Cougars of BYU Walsh gives them a handoff and that is Jamal Willis banging his way to the 39 yard line for he's hit again by Favai and several others. So the game is underway tonight in the islands. BYU on the attack for the first offensive series for either team. There's BYU's coach Lavelle Edwards needs three wins to hit the 200 mark. There's a nice feature on his wife Patty today on ESPN. She got her degree class of 94. It was well done. Well you see the speed of uh, the bows on defense. Try to counter him. And they really run to the football. They're much quicker. Third down about seven for BYU. Here's the first pass of the game. Walsh steps up in the pocket and they sack him. He's dropped at the 30 yard line. That's Ed Ripley who got through to him. And the Cougars are stopped their first time. And we'll have a punting down. Well, I'll tell you, watch Ripley. He really puts a rip technique on the inside, fights off the center. And Ripley, who is a high school wrestler and one of the hardest workers on this ball club, Makes Chris Smealan, the defensive coordinator, look pretty good with that move. So uh, the Bows uh, stop him first time and a punting situation. So as Alan Boardman averaged over 43 yards a punt last year as a freshman. Clint uh, Kubioma, uh, Kubioma is the deep man. Here is the kick. It'll come down about the 30. Bounces there. Has a Cougar roll. 
Back down towards the 20. Kubiyama picks it up there and is knocked down immediately. So good punt that time by the Cougars' Alan Boardman, the sophomore out of Kanab. 45-yard punt. All right, offensively for the Rainbows, Rodney Glover, a junior. Hasn't played very much. Did some uh, backup play last year for them, and they're counting a lot on him this year at quarterback. 6'2", 222-pound junior. He's from California. So the Rainbows with the ball for the first time. One man wide to the right, one wide to the left, one setback. And Glover's back to throw on first down, throws quickly. Completes it. He gets a raise to the 38-yard line. A quick pass over the left side to Brandon uh, Kennedy. Along a line, Dreisbach, Gu, Oliveira, Reed, McGill. They did some switching. McGill had been playing center, and then they moved him back to tackle. He was a tackle last year, a center in the spring. He's back. Mane, Cunningham, Aluwalu, Veneri, and Kubiyama. There are the starters. That was a first down pass. So the Rainbows have the balls. Again the throw. And again they complete it on the sidelines. This time to the 48 yard line. Quick pass on the outside that time to uh, Kubiyama. Defensively up front for BYU. Brock Udafali into the lineup. Pitts and Travis Hall. Hall and Brock who put on some weight from last year. Uh, Freeland, Muirbrook and Simmons were the to be the starting uh, linebackers for BYU. Dermell Reed new to the program. Jack DeMooney a veteran. Corey Cook, a team captain, and Patrick Mitchell, a veteran. So the Rainbows, two quick passes, both of them complete. They have a first down in their own 49. you got to like the way Paul Johnson, the offensive coordinator, is starting out. He's letting Glover throw the ball to get the bugs out. Now they ought to go with a little option or up the gut. And they do. He spins all the way around, hands it into the middle. Very little game this time. Hand it off to Alu Alu. BYU is big and strong up front. Want to get a little faster. They uh, they were in trouble last year defensively. Jay, they'll go uh, a lot with just the two backers. You'll see a safety playing where a backer plays. It gives them just a little more ability to run the football. You see an eight-man front a lot. Well, very little gain on that play. Maybe a half yard. Call it second nine and a half. That's the point spread in this game. The Cougars favored by nine and a half. They split three men wide to the left this time, but. Uh, Glover calls timeout as he looks over the BYU defensive alignment. So there is a timeout on the field with 11.05 to go in the first quarter. It's scoreless, BYU and Hawaii. Cougars defensively playing with just two linebackers right now, Ross and Muirbrick. Muirbrick, that is. And Glover sends a man in motion to the right. He drops straight back to throw. Looks downfield, does throw, and it is incomplete. Good hard hit for a Mitchell for BYU. And that broke up the pass intended for Kennedy. Kennedy with a little square in and Mitchell the veteran who's a candidate for uh, honors this year comes up with a pretty good lick. Mitchell's brother Brian played with the Atlanta Falcons. Third down still about 10 yards to go for the Hawaii Rainbows. I was surprised what an effective job they did up front blocking. That's the big concern for Bob Wagner. How are they going to block people? They got a lot of newcomers up there. Did a good job. Well, they spread them out again at offense this time. And here's Glover back to pass with some pressure into the middle. Intercepted by DeMooney. And DeMooney's down at the 48 yard line. Jack DeMooney with the first interception of the year. And it comes from the Cougar defense. Well, DeMooney had three of them last year. He's an aggressive guy. Watch Rass. Rass will come on a little twist. Watch number 50. He puts the pressure on. And then there's pressure on the other side, and that makes it very easy. And, boy, that's a key to any uh, a pass defense. You get a rush. So Jack DeMooney with a big pick. All right, BYU with the ball at midfield, first and 10. John Walsh at quarterback. Brings Nowatsky in motion. He's back to throw. Does throw. Incomplete. He was pressured a lot that time. Tried to get the pass downfield, but it was incomplete. Intended for Kaipo McGuire. It's going to be a guessing game with the coordinators all night long. Chris Smeelan and Ken Schmidt. And that time, Smeelan with a good call. Had a twist on. Ed Ripley defensively doing the job. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. 
Guys, after the last sack in the last series when John Walsh was sacked, he ran about 15 yards down the field and screamed at one of his receivers, Mike John or Mr. Johnston, number 84. He ran the wrong route and it ended up in a sack. John Walsh not too pleased with his receiver and let him know it. So we talk about it. We come back and he completes one to Mike Johnson. On the right side, it's good enough for the first down. Argonaut Ellis covering for the University of Hawaii. Johnson, who was a starting shortstop a couple years ago, very good athlete. Little hitch pattern that time, a lot of cushion by uh, the bow cornerback on that side. As you take a look at Walsh, a lot of people think this guy is the real deal. You know, Irv Johnson quit baseball this last spring to concentrate on football. And the year before, he hit 337. First and 10, Cougars on the Hawaii 40. Here's Walsh back to pass. There's also a flag down. He's dropped at the 46 yard line, but Hawaii might have been offside. Nonga and Ripley defensively for Hawaii. This should be offside in Hawaii, and it is. Might have been George Noga. George uh, used to go by Tupuola. Of course, his brother Al Noga is one of the best football players I've seen in this league. Here's Jack Baker. On the defense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. So it'll be first and five for the Cougars of BYU. Other whack action today. New Mexico lost to Texas Tech. Utah beat Utah State. Colorado State beat Air Force. Wyoming beat Utah. They're excited in Fort Collins about uh, CSU. I think they got a good football team. They ended up very tough at the end of the year. Out of the shotgun this time for BYU. Walsh with the ball. Inside handoff to Emma Haymuli, and he gains only two yards. He's to the 33 yard line before Kobe Stewart tackled it. Kobe's the Denver Colorado kid. I got a chance to watch him. He went to Montbello High School. He wasn't fooled. That play has been a good play for that man. Lavelle Edwards. A little inside handoff. You run inside and trap. Not this time. Just didn't work. Second down. About three yards to go for a first down. For the Cougars of BYU. I formation this time. But Willis goes in motion over the right. Stops in the slot. They run it up the middle. They get nothing. Emma Haymuli stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So BYU trying to establish something running. Once again, it's Kobe Stewart. The trap, but Stewart was stunting. Guy recruited by Nebraska and KU, very athletic. Watch Stewart. Now here's the trap. Nothing doing. As they're unable to hit the hole because of uh, Stewart's effort. So they got third and still the same situation. Let's see if they turn a quick out again. You know, Herb, the Cougars will run eight, ten plays at the start of the game to see what works, and then they start to work from there. Yeah, this is an old Bill Walsh trick. Walsh fakes the handoff, passes, incomplete. He threw it too high for Jamal Willis, who got a hand on it but couldn't hold it. What a great fake by Hamuli, something that never shows up in the line score. He fooled everybody, and Walsh just doesn't connect. Wide open. That might have gone for six. He was off balance as he had to turn around and reach it. So the Cougars will bring the punter in, Boardman. He'll kick from the 50-yard line, try to pooch it down there, get it out of bounds. Well, nobody will go back. They don't really believe it, do they? Yeah, they're not sure they're going to kick it. See if they give it the long count. Waiting and waiting. And waiting, and that's what they did. See if they could draw him offside. You know, it's like that baseball play. You being an old baseball man, the runners at first and third, they fake the third and then come back to first. It never gets anybody, just upsets the fans. Isn't it, Jay? It sure does. That in a wave. Baseball, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Something they're not playing. Well, that makes it fourth and nine, and now Boardman will punt from his own 45. On the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. We're no score. And we played six minutes in the first quarter. Cougars on the road to BYU next week as they play uh, at Air Force Academy. That's an ABC game. And Hawaii will be at home again against Oregon. Boardman's got it. No rush. Kicks it very high. Spin down. The Cougars are going to cover it. Down inside the five yard line, or close to the five. The rainbow signaled fair catch, but didn't even try to handle it. Well, the rainbows back on their own five-yard line now. 
six yard line make it first and ten. Lever's going to throw on first down does so to Kubiana completes it to the 15 out to the 19 yard line. Kubiana wide on the right side took the quick uh, pass. Jack DeMooney tackled him. Lots of cushion and, and once again the bows are bound and determined to force the issue until there's coverage. And then you'll see a stop and go. Here it is. And they get something rolling right here as uh, Kubiani just drives the corner off the ball and turns out. Tabuti just took himself out of the game. I'm not sure if it's an injury or what. First down, Hawaii. Inside, he's still got it running the option. Oh, he is racked up hard at the 19 yard line. Glover running the option. That's Ross. I believe I call him Ross. It's Ross, the transfer from Ricks. In fact, it, this looks like a Ricks defense. Let's check with Holly. Holly? He hurt his, Jack DeMooney hurt his left shoulder on that last interception as he came down and stumbled to the ground. He came off the sidelines holding his shoulder. Now they're taking off his pads, and the team physician, Daryl Stacy, is taking a look at it right now. Second down and 10 for the University of Hawaii from their own 20. There's Glover, a lot of pressure, gets the pass up, and they've got the first down yardage on the left side this time. Quick out to uh, Brandon Kennedy with Patrick Mitchell covering. That's been good for them so far. There you see DeMuni as they work on that left shoulder. Jay, they're setting up a stop and go. Some people call it a chair. Anything you want to call it, that means that you're going to fake that quick hitter that they've uh, had so much success with and then throw deep, trying to get him to bite. DeMuni is from Hawaii, from Laia. Second, or uh, check that it's first down for the Rainbows in their own 30 yard line. They started on their own six on this drive after a good Cougar punt. Neither team with the score. As uh, both offenses trying to see what will work against the other's defense. Michael Carter is a graduate assistant this year. He played their quarterback position last year. That's Glover faking the hand of it. He's going to throw deep. Way downfield, and it is. He caught it at the 25. Well, the rainbows go deep, and it pays off this time. There it is. It's a deep post, and the ball hangs up. It might have been a touchdown as the defender falls down. Boy, I'll tell you what, this hangs up forever and ever, but it doesn't. Uh, it's not how, it's how many. That's 49 yards. Brandon Kennedy got it. He's also injured on the play. So they'll come out and check him right now. Brandon Kennedy is from uh, North Greenville Junior College. He's recruited by Houston. A lot of people thought he'd wind up there at TCU. Instead, he winds up here and gives his ball club great field position. They're all the way down to the 25. Boy, how about Glover? Danny Glover's nephew. Probably if we kiss up to him, we might get free tickets to a movie. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> it's worth a try. Here's Lavelle Edwards. 93 yards, Glover. Five out of seven passing as we look at Lavelle Edwards. Rainbows have gotten off to a quick start against BYU each of the last couple of years here. Jason Mane comes into the game replacing Kennedy. Kennedy's had a fine start here for them. Has four receptions and that big gainer. So the Rainbows have a first down of the BYU 25-yard line. Here's Glover back to throw. Same area. And completes it to the 15. Works his way to the 12-yard line. The flat on the left side to Kubiyama. Dermel Reed for BYU tackling. A good game. Boy, they had down. success with this play. Kubiyama transferred back. He was at Boston College. Boston College gave Michigan all they wanted today. And that play has really been successful. Go down, drive the man off. Uh, off the uh, hash mark, turn around, catch the football. And Glover's been perfect. Gerald Lacey at the wide receiver for the Rainbows now. First down, Hawaii on the BYU 13 yard line. They'll run it up the middle this time and they won't get anything. Ran it right into the middle with Tupu Alu Alu and uh, Randy Brock and Stan Ross for BYU racked him up. Well, we mentioned Ross. Of course, Brock has been around for some time. He's just a good football player. Look at him slide down. Big 97. A three-year starter. He's a high school All-American. A lot of people thought he might uh, 
Might wind up at UCLA at Arizona. And there's a look at Ross. It looks like Rass, but it's Ross. He's got a brother. Plays on the offensive line. Two-yard game, second and eight on about the 11-yard line. Glover's looking to throw. Does throw into the end zone. It's incomplete. He rifled that one, but it was over the head of Kubiyama. And on out of the end zone. Ran a quick slant that time as you look at Bob Wagner. Wagner came here with Dick Toomey. And, and it's amazing. You look back at who they used to play. You never heard of them. The schools involved. Now all of a sudden there's 40,000 plus here in the stadium. This guy's got a nice little winning percentage. Done a good job over here. And in, those days, in, Washington too. in those days they always played BYU tough defensively, but they didn't have the offense. Yeah. They went to this spread. And boy, it's changed things around. Sure has. All right. Cougars in a bump this time. Let's see if they try and throw deep. Third and eight. Cougars coming after him. He fumbles the football. And I think BYU's got it. The Cougars have it. Looks like Brock got it. Yeah, Randy Brock came up with the fumble recovery. Irv, was that a mixed play? Uh, Here's what he did. He changed the play at the line of scrimmage. He wanted to go away from the, the press as they were coming up and bumping the wideouts. He tried to run option on the right side. Just a little inexperience. Well, he fumbles, and the Cougars get it. And there's a timeout on the field. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Well, the Rainbows failed to score in the first uh, scoring opportunity of the game. Watch, see, Glover fakes the handoff, still has the ball, and is stripped out of his hands. And I'll tell you, the guy who, uh, who gets the chores done that time is number 56 for him, and that's uh, just a nice little play. Travis Hall. Yeah. Hall, who can run a little bit, makes a big play. So the Cougars dodge another bullet. One interception, one fumble recovery. It's been mostly Hawaii in the first uh, po portion of this football game. Here's a pitch to the left side of Jamal Willis, and Jamal is to the 28-yard line for BYU. A quick toss to the left. Tackled by Junior Faavai. Run to the short side of the field. Once again, Norm Chow will start uh, uh, picking a, a little bit here now. You mentioned, Jay, that they, they script the first few plays. That's a Bill Walsh trick. And then you come out and get a little help from upstairs. And you start to go to work. Second and five, BYU. They're playing without their uh, most uh, experienced receiver, Doman, with a knee injury. He will not play tonight. There's Nowatsky in motion to the right side. And a rainbow jumped forward and made contact. That's Cox. Well, Mike Cox. They always point. Let's see what happens here now. You always point to the other side. This is like you, you, you. <laughs> this is the con job. Let's see what Jack Baker says. Our sides on the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, they walk off the five yard penalty. Which leaves the ball about a half yard short of a first down. Used to be automatic. Ball clubs would throw right here, play fake. But BYU throws so much, I don't think you fool anybody. The easy way was to just sneak it. It takes a middle backer out of it. Second down for BYU then. And less than a yard to go for a first down. There's no score. We're in the first quarter of the game. It's fumbled. I don't know who's going to get this one. It's all over the place. Hey, Mooley fumbled it. The Rainbows think they have it. I don't know if anybody's got it right now. Well, I'll tell you what, it gets nasty in those pileups. This is where everybody points the other way. Doesn't mean anything until striped shirts point. You don't know who had it when this all started. Well, it's who's stronger. This is why you got to lift weights, Jay. It is a Hawaii player down the bottom. Ed Ripley. No, check that. It's Rod York, the junior. There it is. They just needed a half yard. The handoff is a good one. Amuli just can't get the handle. So uh, the bow's right back at it. They've had a lot of success throwing. No success on the ground. They're on the Cougar 22-yard line after they fumble to give it up. BYU's first home game will be Colorado State on the 17th. There's still flag. tickets available. Too much time. On the offense. Five yard penalty. It's a five-yard penalty on the Rainbows. I didn't get it. Did 
Jack Baker is our uh, referee. So they walk off five. Shane Muirbrook, the Cougar linebacker, sprained an ankle, but will be back in a little while, they say. So the Rainbows have first and 15. Glover still with the football. Passes. It's complete to the 19-yard line, and he's down right there. That's good defense by Mitchell. Very short game. Mitchell very effective that time. Brandon Kennedy made the catch. So those wideouts have been doing well for the Rainbows in this game. Glover's been impressive with his release. Six steps to the left, plant that back foot, pump it on that particular play. It's a run and shoot play. They have second down, about seven yards for a first down, and the third 19 yard line. There's no score in the first quarter. Running play, nothing. As Irv said, they're not getting anything when they try to run it. The BYU is big and strong, and it's just nothing doing. They line up inside and just defy you to, to run inside. Alo Alo carried it, and it was Travis Hall who made the stop. Well, I'll tell you, there's just no surge at all. Brock comes around to help out. And Travis Hall with the play. I was impressed with him last year. I like the way he runs with the football. There you see Coach Wagner on the sidelines. That penalty, the five-yard penalty, was a substitution infraction. Third down and seven for the Bulls. See where they throw it. Has to throw it quickly and it's incomplete. Great the, stunt. The reason he had to throw it quickly is that Shane Muirbrook was right on top of him and he had to unload. It's become a guessing game with the defensive coordinators and both have done a great job. Ken Schmidt with the right call last uh, that time. Fourth down for Hawaii. Line of scrimmage is the... Uh, is the 20 yard line. So we'll try a field goal. It's Box to Beal in there. Mr. Beal will be kicking from the 27, a 37 yard attempt. He's a sophomore out of California. Won the job in the spring. Oswald had it last year. There's no score. 340 to go in the first half. The kick is good. So Stabile gets the first score of the game. The Wives cash in on a fumble. Hawaii three, Brigham Young University, nothing. BYU in Hawaii, that's Jack Tabuni, the Cougar veteran safety who injured his shoulder earlier in the game. And uh, they worked on him. He's got his pads back on. He'll be coming back into the game. Good news for the Cougars. Very good news. That means it's not a separation. Tabuni had a pick earlier. Box to be able to kick off. BYU with two men back deep. I think it's Mike Johnston. No, it's Atawaya and Nowatsky for BYU, the two deep men. Here's the Beals kick. It'll carry to the five yard line. Atawaya has it there. Comes up the near sidelines, goes back into the middle. Comes outside, slips a tackle, he's over the 20, and knocked down about the 23-yard line. That was a pretty good individual effort. Boy, did I like him a couple years ago. He was something. Went on a mission. Matthew Harding was very, very quick on the special teams unit. Made the tackle. Cougars, no yards rushing. The Rainbows won. There's a man who is currently the eighth winningest active coach. Tom Osmond's number one, his percentage... 81, and Lavelle Edwards is 72 percent. Well, the Cougars trying to get something going offensively. They have not been able to do so so far. Split back this time. John Walsh back to throw on first down. Does throw, completes it to the 34-yard line. Well, he throws a nice pass. That'll be close to first down yardage. Nowatsky caught it, and Lindsey Yowell, Yowell made the tackle. Nowatsky, who his uncle played, that was Tom, that'd be Tom. Played for uh, the Trident Lions and down around a nice little hook pattern. They went from the uh, open back set, let you throw and let you swing people. And it's been an effective formation. They're in it again. Bell Edwards has used this from uh, day one when he decided to throw the football. He gets five receivers into the pattern quick. Second down and a yard. 
Walsh will run it. Fakes and is hit. But he's got the first down as he crossed the 35-yard line. So John Walsh found some room, took it for the first down. Ellis and Stewart combined to pull him down. Well, you know, he's a big guy, and he takes those hits. But uh, as you look at Kobe Stewart, the youngsters had uh, some success early. I remember when this guy did this against UCLA, Jay, a game that we did in Provo a couple of years ago, and he didn't return. So that's the problem. Plus, when you put your head down like that, I'm not sure that uh, Norm Chow wants him doing that. Now, that's a very valuable right arm. You don't need to do that. Let a Mooley and uh, Willis do that. He's going to throw again. Does. Completes it. To Kuyper McGuire. And Kuyper's over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Kuyper is from Pearl City, Hawaii. Tackled by Doe Henderson. A pretty good football player. <laughs> they're talking a little trash. You can't talk trash this year. Boy, they're going to watch that stuff. That and fighting. Yeah. I saw Cincinnati, Indiana this afternoon. They called a taunting penalty. Cost Cincinnati big time. They're in the football game until they did it. You got a button your lip baby in this league. All leagues. Second down, a long four for the BYU Cougars. Out of the shotgun this time. Nowatsky goes in motion to the left. Walls has it. Throws. Completes it. Completes it to the Hawaii 44-yard line to Mike Johnston. Nice catch by Johnston. Two men, on, uh, one on each side of him. He's still got it. Carlos Anderson tackled him. Big he first downer. Johnson was recruited by Hawaii as well as Washington State. Here it is, the open formation. They check down, and then they get in the pattern. There's a strong arm of Walsh. The coverage was good. Doesn't matter when you got an arm like that. He got him on the move right on schedule. There to the Hawaii 43-yard line. Hawaii leading 3 to nothing. Fakes the dry, still got it. Throws deep, incomplete. Just a little too tall for Nowatsky at the 15-yard line. He went up for it, was able to touch it, but couldn't pull it in. That was a well-executed pattern. Walsh didn't hit him. Pull a guard, make it look like the trap, and then boom, throw the post. And Walsh is upset with himself. He knew he had six. Carlos Anderson covering. He's now four of seven for 41 yards passing. Well, he hit against Utah State with 619. <laughs> <laughs> 619. People around the country looked at that and said, what do they do out west? <laughs> out of the shotgun, second and ten. Cougars, a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Walsh sets up, throws, completes it to the right side. That's his tight end. He's at the 37, pushed back to the 44. The tight end, Chad Lewis. Kobe Stewart tackled him. Offensive surprise of last year. That's a pick play. Is it legal? No, but it's never called, so you go ahead and run it. And, and that's exactly uh, what BYU does. The guy who runs the pick effectively was Nowatsky. Look at Bob Wagner. Spent some time with Donnie James in Hawaii, at uh, Washington, I should say. He might be mentioning that, too. <laughs> Third down. A little over five for BYU for a first down on the Rainbow 39. Rainbow's ahead, three to nothing. Human Knight in Honolulu, shotgun alignment. Should swing a back. Walsh. Can't find anybody and they drop him. They drop him for a big loss. I think the guy involved there was 83. Now let's pick it up here. It was 83 or 93. Boy, that's a good looking pattern defensively, though. Everybody was covered. And it, yeah, it is uh, number 93. We'll pick up the number here, Jay. That's uh, Tafona. Tafona, yeah. So, uh, the dodge a bullet. Time will run out in the first period now. The Cougars will be forced to punt, but the first quarter has ended. And after the two teams battle through a quarter, Hawaii has a field goal to show for it. The Cougars have nothing. It's Hawaii 3. And BYU nothing. Wait a minute. The officials conferring. Let's see if they're going to. Uh, I don't think they'll run another play, will they? Nope. That ends the quarter. So after one quarter play, the Cougars trail the Rainbows of Hawaii three to nothing. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Jay Monson, Herb Brown in Honolulu, Aloha Stadium, Hawaii leading BYU three to nothing. How about that sign? Why is the sky blue and white? <laughs> I think I saw that in North Carolina that sign <laughs> too. Huh? Same sign. Maybe they <laughs> came over here after they used it there. Huh? Maybe, yeah. 
Cougars have Boardman back to punt. He'll kick them around his own 40-yard line. Henderson is the deep man for the University of Hawaii. Demetrius Henderson, a junior out of Los Angeles. Two-year starter defensively with some pretty good speed. Snaps low, but he scoops it up and gets the punt away, and it's a good one, too. Henderson on the run, uh, lets it go by him, and it will go into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback. We'll come out to the 20, and the Rainbows will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. They lead 3 to nothing. Check your local listings. Lever runs the option, pitches it wide to the outside, and they turn the corner for 12 yards. Glenn Freitas is now in at quarterback for the University of Hawaii. He's a sophomore from right here in Hawaii. Had a good spring and was in a battle with Glover for the first place or for the uh, first team position. Well, by far their best offensive set. They caught BYU loaded up on the wide side of the field. They come back weak and they get the big game. The first thing they've done on the ground all night long. Freitas did a good look. Freitas with two men wide to the left this time. That spread offense. Running the option. He still got the ball. They hooked him for a second, but he pulled away and runs it out to the 45 yard line. Corey Cook tackled him. You know, somebody had him by the jersey at the line of scrimmage, and I don't think they thought he had the football. What about a good ball handler? How about this Glenn Freitas? He is from uh, Hawaii, a sophomore, 180 pounder. Two quick first down runs. And they're now on the B uh, correction on the Hawaii 44-yard line. He really made some progress this spring. I know that uh, Bob Wagner was really pleased with him. Two straight options. They overload the left side now. Trips left. Freitas with the ball fakes. Wait a minute. The play has been stopped. There's a flag down. It's a good thing too, because he had two Cougars run right on his throat. Uh, that's where you're up 50,000 feet and your wings fall off. He was in trouble. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. On the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Now it costs him five yards for a procedural, procedural mistake. And the Rainbows will have the ball now on their own 39 yard line where it is first and 15. He's an interesting guy, you know, he earned a letter with special team, so you know he's tough. Gives him a different look with that option. You'll have to see how he throws the ball. That's going to concern his arm strength. Well, he hands it out this time to the first man by and powers his way, maybe to the original line of scrimmage. Got a pile up over the side that time, carrying the ball. Uh, Tupu Alu Alu. Take a look at what's going on up front. Now, the best football player. Up front is a guy by the name of Kelly McGill, 53. Kelly has moved back and forth. He's been a, a center. He's been a tackle. They seem to use him wherever uh, is needed. The other guy that they really like is the one that you just watched, 63, Kendall Goo. Goo has that size to play pro football. He's 300 pounds. Second down, 10 and a half. Well, he handed off to the first man by again, and he ran right into a stunning Cougar defensive man. And there'll be no gain on this one. Again, that was Alu Alu, and it was Stan Ross that ran right into it. He is tough. He's a little bigger than the backers I've watched from BYU through the years. Once again, out of Ricks. A lot of defenders from Ricks as you look at Bob Wagner. There's the Mooney. He just can't get it done, can he? He's, uh, he's in pain. They're going to make sure you don't take a chance. Well, he's before the... Uh, it's a lot of his family here. He's from the islands and wanted to play very well in this game and started off with an interception. Third and ten for the Rainbows from their own 44. Three to nothing, Hawaii, lead, Hawaii leading. Here's Freitas sprinting out, looking, throwing, and completes it. Isn't it? You know, it is not enough for the first down, not nearly enough. Completed at Kubiyama on a rollout. Jermel Reed for BYU and Patrick Mitchell both in on the stop. It will not be enough for the first down. Short yardage. Watch Reed, number 19. Straight man coverage. Reed comes over with a short tackle. You know, he slips off. You got, you got help from the sideline. You're going to be in pretty good shape. This is a transfer from Langley Junior College and a punting situation coming up for the Bows. 
privilege with two men back in uh, to receive. Johnston is one of them. Get a check on the other one. But uh, Steve Wilson is the punter. Gets the kick away. It'll be taken at the 13-yard line. Back to the 20. Oh, hit high to the 20-yard line. I'm going to say Wilson is an All-American candidate as a punter. So the BYU team will take over deep in their own territory. They're trading three to nothing. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Okay, that was a 33-yard punt. It was Jason Cooper, a junior out of Ogden, Utah, who took that punt. BYU takes over first and 10 on their own 22-yard line from the shotgun. Trading three to nothing. They'll run it. Atawaya into the middle, barely back to the line of scrimmage. Tackling him was George Munga. At halftime, the Health Rider Halftime Report. Holly Rowe looking at BYU, Hawaii's rivalry, secrets of the island magic. She'll talk with the new WAC Commissioner Carl Benson on the Health Rider Halftime Report. That Benson's everywhere. They say he hadn't been in the office two days. He's here tonight. <laughs> I know. He's, uh, he's aggressive. Second and ten, BYU. Cougar offense has been stopped. Takes a handoff. Walsh to pass, does pass, completes it in the middle of the field. All the way to the 40-yard line is Nowatsky. Big gainer for BYU. Junior Favai made the tackle. That's why this guy's going to be a terrific pro quarterback. He looks first to Jamal Willis. Nothing doing. He finds his secondary receiver. Now watch him look to the right. 29 Willis was on a little circle pattern. That was a good-looking play all the way. Comes right back down the middle. He guns one to Nowatsky. Nowatsky, a lot of people thought was going to go to the University of Indiana with big yardage. First and 10, BYU on their own 41-yard line. Bole goes in motion to the left side. It's a free play. Yeah. Well, it looks like the officials have stopped it. I think Hawaii was offsides again. Nalei Cox made contact. Here's uh, Coach Wagner out on the field. He feels his players have been drawn off. Offsides on the defense. That's a nose guard, Jay. They're not drawn off. Repeat first down. Unless the guy's cheating with the football, I didn't see anything unusual. You got to have a little more discipline. You just got to be patient. That looks like baseball. Or if you talk baseball, I mean, if you miss a ground <laughs> ball, you turn around, pick up a rock, and throw it off the field, right? No, that's right. I think you're onto something. <laughs> first and ten. First and five. Brigham Young on their own 46, trying to score right up the middle. Atawaya has maybe a yard. Closed up quickly by Kobe Stewart. Both teams trying to establish running games and not done the exceptionally well at it so far. Jack DeMoney has a bruised shoulder, will not return. That isn't good news. He's had a pick. Kind of a leader back there. Cougars have second and four near midfield. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Hawaii ahead three to nothing. Walsh with an audible. Walsh back to pass. Does pass. Oh, what a catch down the sidelines. Tremendous catch by Johnston of BYU. He made a jumping, juggling catch and stayed in bounds. You know, the ball is thrown perfectly. Oh, that is something else. I saw Charles Johnson, the Detroit Lions, make one like that the other day in an exhibition. One more time, it's worth it. How about the touch by Walsh? Normally he guns it. This time he lets his man run out of Well done on the fade. Cougars with the first down on the Rainbow 32-yard line. Walsh will run from the shotgun this time. Nowatsky in motion. Walsh looks over the field. Here's his pass. It's complete to Nowatsky on the left side. He's inside the 30-yard line. Doe There's, Henderson, the tackler. There's DeMooney with ice in the shoulder. He's saw the same rep on the uh, Clement. Remember that? Yeah. Clement had his injury right here a couple years ago. Exactly. A little arm strength that time by Walsh. How about the coverage, though, by uh, the Bows that time? Short yardage. Let's you take a look at their coach, Bob Wagner. Clements is the Cougar backup quarterback this year, and two years ago, starting in a game here, he was injured early. Second down and seven, BYU. Cougars trying to score. Walsh dancing, dancing. Here's the pass. Incomplete. Incomplete on the side, going to his uh, tight end, Mealy. Man-to-man coverage, and Walsh had a long time to throw the football. Normally, 
the defense breaks down. There was no breakdown. There's pretty good coverage that time. Walsh now 8 out of 12 for 90 yards. Last year he threw for 3,700, 28 touchdowns in regular season. And had an outstanding uh, pass efficiency record. So everybody wanted him. All the passing schools, Miami, Florida State. Third and seven from the shotgun. Walsh steps up, zips it, incomplete. Shooting for Nowatsky, covered well by Carlos Anderson, who made a hit at just the right time. Boy, this be a long field goal if that's what they choose to do. BYU blocks the stunt pretty good. Walsh will step up in the pocket. Once again, the coverage is good, though. They play good man coverage. Well, it will be Lauder. Lauder set out last year for BYU. Was the place kicker two years ago. He'll be kicking from the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. He's a left-footed kicker. And this is within his range. The kick has plenty of distance, and it is... I'm waiting. It is no good. No good. Very close. Slaughter almost ties it up, but he does not. With 10 minutes to go in the first half, Hawaii 3, BYU nothing. Hawaii has a three-point lead, 3 to nothing over BYU, and they've just stopped the Cougars. And they will take over. Rodney Glover is back in at quarterback now for the Rainbows. The line of scrimmage, their own 30-yard line. Glover is tackled before he can hand off. Jumping across is Greg Pitts for BYU, or is it Yuna Folly? See what Holly Rowe has a report. Holly? Jack DeMooney has a partial dislocation of his shoulder. They tried to pat it so he could go back in and play, but it has since slipped out twice. It looks like he is done for the night unless BYU got in a tough spot. They could use him, but to be on the safe side, it looks like he will be on the sidelines for the evening. Well, the Rainbows lose five on that one. So it's second and 15. Pitts really jumped the snap count that time, Jay. Guessed right. Did a good job. Here's Glover rolling out, looking to throw. Does throw downfield, and it is incomplete. Overthrew his man. It was out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Trying to go to uh, Kubiyama. They like Glover to throw. Freitas to run the option. Passing situation coming up. A lot of times Bob Wagner will try and run option here. Well, they bring the play in as it's third down. Third down, about 14 or 15 yards to go for a first down. Three to nothing, Hawaii. Here's Glover, a quick pass. It's batted away right at the line of scrimmage by Travis Hall. BYU's uh, looking very good on defense right now. They're putting a lot of defense pressure on Defense done them. a good job. The only thing they've given up has been that short pattern by giving uh, a little too much cushion with the cornerback. Punting situation, BYU ought to get the ball around the 40. Mike Johnston is the deep man for BYU. The there it is. is. Boy, this one is just batted down by Travis Hall. His second defensive play it was impressive. Steven Wilson, an All-American candidate, kicking from the 14-yard line. Gets it up there. Drives Johnson back to the 28. He's got it there. Tries to get wide to the right side, then has to go back in the middle, and they knock him down at the 35. So the Cougars with fair field position as they start their next offensive uh, thrust, trading by a score of three to nothing. Well, the last times, the last five times, at least these teams have played, we've seen a lot of offense. Today, uh, Irv, it's a pretty good defense from both sides. Very good defense. 8.48 left, out of the spread. Cougars first and 10 from their own 35, and Walsh looking for a pass. Right in the middle of the field, it's caught. All the way to the 50 to the 47-yard line is Jamal Willis, the Cougars' tailback. Victor Santa Cruz knocked into the turf finally, but BYU with a big gainer on the throw. Boy, was it ever. Delayed circle. Watch Willis come out of the left side. He checks down and goes between tight end and tackle. High stepper, a guy out of Las Vegas who got hurt against New Mexico last year. Gives him great field position there at the 48. First down, BYU. 
Cougars have been close enough to try a long field goal. It was no good. The Rainbows have a field goal. And that's it. Hawaii fumbled away a scoring opportunity early in the game. There's Nowatsky in motion. Walsh to pass again. Does pass. Complete and a hard hit. Mike Johnson caught it at the 45. And Carlos Anderson racked him up hard. Anderson. Solid spring. Tell you what, this guy's a good weightlifter, and that's the way you play corner. Looks like some cushion, but he really reacts. Watch him move his feet. That's what you look for in a corner. Boom. Good play by Johnston to hang on to that one. Uh, absolutely. Short game. Three yards. Second and seven from the 45. The success has come thrown to the backs out of the open set. That's the set they're in right now. Ottawa and Willis, the setbacks. Walsh to pass. Takes once, then throws, completes it in the middle of the field. Down at the 38-yard line is his tight end, Chad Lewis. Not a first down throw. Ellis and Henderson combining on the tackle. You have to like the way Lewis handles himself, coached by uh, Tom Rabb out of Orem. This guy was a high jumper in high school. So you got third and short. Third down, about a yard. Bringing the play in for the Cougars is Mike Johnston. The junior flanker back. And he split wide to the left this time. They'll run it with Jamal Willis. He broke one tackle. Tries to force his way forward for the first down, and he might have made it. If so, that was an excellent effort by Willis. Junior Favai wouldn't let him get away. A run behind Pilgrim and Herring, a couple of big ones. And that was tough yardage. Eli Herring is 6'8", 335. Evan Pilgrim, 6'5", 285. It's one of the fears the Rainbows had in this game is that the Cougars' size would wear them down. Well, and time will tell if that happens in the second half. Right now, it's Hawaii's quickness versus BYU's bulk. But the Cougars do get a first down. They have a first down on the Rainbow 37 now. As they break with Tyler Boli. Or Boley, I should say, out wide to the left. Good pronunciation. And here's Walsh to pass. Being chased, gets away, rolls to the right, now throws it downfield, and it is incomplete. Here's Tempest a late flag. Willis. Now a flag does go down. The this Cougars were pleading for a flag. Kobe Stewart was covering. And the coverage was pretty good. This is the umpire, Jim Crittenden, with the call. Let's see if Kobe Stewart is hanging on. Here's a good scramble. And this is something you cannot practice against. This scramble almost trapped right there. High steps it. Look at this touch right here. Let's see if this is interference. Yeah. Call is correct. The back judge can't arm. see it. Yeah, it looked like he hooked his arm before the pass got there. Well, the officials are still talking it over, but I think it's about where it will be marked off and all. Pass it. A big for, uh, play for BYU as Coach Wagner discusses the play with one well, of the officials. Well, he's discussing with Claire Gosman. Gosman say, hey, I'm over here by you. <laughs> that gives BYU a first down on the Rainbow 23-yard line. You know, BYU has scored in 235 consecutive games. Now the crowd's going to try to help the Rainbows and also voice their displeasure over that last penalty. Walls from the shotgun. Oh, that's a that's a motion penalty on the right tackle, Herring. That's what a crowd. Jay, you hit it exactly right. That's what the crowd did. They caused that penalty. That'll be a five-yard procedural penalty on BYU. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. See, the NFL has gone to. Um, the helmet thing this year where you can hear the speaker and everything. Watch the right tackle move now. That's you can't hear the signal. The guards can see the football. Tackles can't. Herring moves a step early. He's got some speed to contend with out there. He's a big guy. He wants to get his feet going. First and 15 for BYU back at the 28-yard line. Rainbow's leading 3 to nothing. Walsh back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. And a sack him this time at the 38-yard line. Led by Nalei Cox. 
Well, they had a first down, down to the 23-yard line. Now they're going to have a second down, all the way back to the 39-yard line. Patel Cox is the lone starter back. He plays with intensity, tough and strong. That's a big play. They went to the T formation that time so they could hear the uh, signals. And Cox just, boy, I'll tell you, that's a great effort. What a surge by him. So after that uh, pass interference call, things were looking good. Now they're going the wrong way. Well, they'll go back to the shotgun. Tackle moved again, Jay. Jeff uh, Brady came charging through, but I think a BYU player had moved before he did that. Well, Herring moved again, and they're trying to protect him, putting a tight end on that side, then muddled it up a little bit. And they just can't hear signals. Dead ball. Here we go for the season. On the well, the crowd's enjoying it because they've created two penalties here. Well, this is just like swimming where you nearly drown. You know, crowd suddenly, you got to go right back into the water. And the crowd realizes they got something going here. They're part of this. The line of scrimmage is the 43. They have to get down to the 13 for a first down, and it's second down. Walsh up over center has the snap. Gets the pass off. Incomplete. He had a man open and missed him that time. That was Nowatsky at the 25-yard line. So BYU struggling. They have not been able to get into the end zone. And as I mentioned, they have scored in 235 consecutive games. The guy who forced that play was Jeff Brady, number 41. Hard rush upfield from the outside. Took a real wide route. And had the quickness to uh, pressure. Third down and long yardage. We have 520 to go in the first half. Like to hit a post here so you can get a field goal attempt. Walsh throwing deep, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to McGuire, well covered by Anderson. They were both fighting for position downfield. Neither one could get to the football. So the Cougars will have to punt it away. Watch Carlos Anderson, who was a high school fullback, had a solid spring. Does a good job here. Plays good position. Entitled to, uh, to do that. Back deep for the Rainbows is Kubiala. Punting Boardman for BYU. Three to nothing, Hawaii. Got the kick away, kicks it very high, kicks it away from Kubiyama. Bounces near the 10, he fields it at the 5, starts up the sideline, spins away and is dropped. He made it around the 13-yard line. So Boardman does a pretty good job of pinning him back a ways. First and 10, Hawaii. Glover with the ball, spinning, looking to throw, sets up and throws way deep, and it is incomplete. He threw that all the way to the BYU 42-yard line. Tended for Kennedy, who was covered by Mitchell, but it was out of bounds when it came down. Yeah, but Jay, that's the old flick of the wrist. I mean, he ain't throw it hard. As you look at Jack DeMooney, who's out of, of this football game. Glover's got a cannon. Glover lettered as a backup last year. 20-year-old quarterback. We saw him two years ago at the Air Force Academy. They won that football game when he came in. Michael Carter, and another guy that uh, had a problem, came in, did a good job. Second down and 10 for the Rainbows. Cougars trying to keep him pinned back here and get another chance at the end zone. Glover fakes a handoff. He's back to throw. He's being chased. Tries to set up a screen and it's battered away and almost intercepted. I think it's Travis Hall. Travis Hall tipped that pass for BYU. And if it hung up just a little longer, Lula Folly, I think, could have gotten to it. Here's a look at Roger French, who uh, is the offensive coordinator and also takes care of the offensive linemen, trying to get their blocking assignments straightened out. Hawaii has done a good job mixing things up. Were they trying to set up a screen that time? Yeah, they did throw the screen. That could wind up in the end zone the other way. Well, we have a third down play coming. Third and ten for Hawaii. Still on the 13-yard line. Glover under pressure rolls out. Now will run it himself. He'll be dropped right near the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pressure from BYU. John Pollock 
Came up in the secondary there, but boy, he was chased by the interior lineman. And give credit to Janelle Reed, too, also does a good job. Now, this punt should go to about the 45 yard line. Take a look at the range. Mike Johnson is back there. He moves up to the 48. As uh, Steve Wilson gets ready to kick and gets it away. Kicks it very, very high. Johnson takes it fair catch at the 43-yard line. So BYU will have the ball at midfield. They still have four minutes to play with in the half, and BYU has always had a very good two-minute offense. So you think make it work right now. I think people uh, taking a look at this score can't believe it. I mean, this is a couple of teams that normally put something on the board. Next game for BYU, the Cougars will be at the Air Force Academy as far as our telecast two weeks from today. In Provo, Colorado State comes to town for a key whack matchup. BYU and Colorado State in two weeks on the Blue White Network. Check your local listings for the time in your area. Here's Walsh, fires down the sidelines. Oh, he had Wilson, or, uh, Willis open at the 25 yard line. There's also a flag down. Boy, I tell you, that one hurt Jay. They uh, go with no backs. Willis goes in motion. There was no coverage. As you look at uh, the officials get together, no coverage by the Bows. That's a touchdown if you hook up there. Let's see what the penalty is all about. Might have been a hold on this corner. Holding on the defense. Yeah, it's a defensive hold. First down. So that gives BYU a first down, but again, that was very, very close to a touchdown. All right. Once again, Willis goes in motion. Walsh wants him all away, lays it out there. There ain't anybody near him. That's the linebacker's responsibility. And he was on a stunt, so um, just doesn't happen. First and ten, BYU on the Rainbow 47-yard line. It's been tough down here. The crowd really gets noisy at this end of the field. That's why they're in the uh, key formation. Three to nothing, Hawaii. Walsh. Completes it on the sidelines to Johnston. Johnson knocked out of bounds inside the 40 yard line. Might have the first down. I think it's short. Covering Kobe Stewart. Walsh is just effortless with that uh, pass. He's got such a strong arm. Brings it back, brings it to the air, and the ball is there. Out of Torrance, California. Some, we just saw Coach Wagner. Some would say. This is a more important game for Hawaii than BYU. It's a road game for the Hawaii if they lose, but for Hawaii if they lose a home game, they're in trouble. It was enough for the first down. Walsh to pass again. Pumps, now he's going to run it. Running to the 30, to the 25, down to the 23-yard line. He's got another first down. Well, there was just nobody out there, so he took it. Well, you like to see him slide, though, into first base and not... Take a chance with those shoulders. There it is. Henderson tackled him. Uh, they're on a stunt and they lose their passing lane. That's a good job by the BYU interior lineman picking that up. Now here's what you'd like to see him just get down, and not take a chance. But you know what? He likes contact. A tough kid. First down, BYU on the Rainbow 24 with three and a half to go in the first half. See if the noise factor is really important here now. You got to watch. Got to watch your body balance if you're a tackle. Here's Walsh to pass again. Does pass to Haymuli. Haymuli's out of bounds inside the 20, the 19-yard line. Get out of the backfield. Lindsey Yawa was covering. Secondary receiver that time. Walsh does a good job. Wanted to go to Lewis. They jumped Lewis right away. Haymuli wide open. Stops the clock. Going out of bounds with three... 19 to play. Lavelle has always half. done it. Excuse me, Jay. Lavelle has always done a good job throwing his backs. I saw the year they won the national championship with Robbie Bosco. I did the Pittsburgh game, and they worked over the uh, linebackers with their backs. Beat them to death. Second and six, Cougars. Nice catch on the sidelines. It's not a first down. Again, that was Hay Mooley, and he's out of bounds at the 17 this time, so it'll be third down about three. Setting that thing up. Once again, the corner really plays tight. See if they run a stop and go. Yeah, well, again, covering. So the Cougars need a first down now, or uh, we'd probably look at a, an attempt to tie the score with a field goal as they have third down and a little over three yards to go for a first down. 
crowd making lots of noise again. They're going to run it with Jamal Willis. Jamal turns the corner. Does he have the first down? I don't think so. They try to sweep to the left side, but he didn't quite make it. Thanks to Junior Favai for the Hawaii Rainbows. What a great block by Mike Johnson. Boy, he did his part. They're about a half a yard short. Junior Favai, he's been a pretty good player for these guys. He uh, he bounces around. He get after you a little bit. Weightlifter, good student. You no, know, they are not bringing the kicker in. It's fourth down, about a yard and a half to go for a first down. See if you uh, go on a long count here, Jay. Now what took place? Oh, oh Hawaii got a timeout time out. call. Yeah. They needed one. They didn't they have did. enough. They didn't expect BYU to come back on the field, so they did call a timeout. As you see, John Walsh coming off the field. Hawaii leading the Cougars by a score of three to nothing. We have uh, two and a half minutes left to play on the first half. Boy, you saw the speed of uh, Hawaii on that particular play. As it looked like the Pilgrim out in front of the ball carrier, they're going to pick up the first down. They close quickly. As you take a look at uh, Lavelle Edwards. Cougar coaching staff thinking it over. We look out on the field. They still do not have the kicker out there. So it looks like they're going to go for the first down. They'd like the touchdown. Well, you figure that that big offensive line would give you a half a yard. And strong as Walsh is, the sneak would appear to be the safest play. It does take the middle backer out of there. A couple of streaks. We mentioned the Cougars have scored 235 straight. They haven't in this one. Nowatsky has got a pass in this one, so he has now got a pass in 10 consecutive games for BYU. Well, the Rainbows with their defensive unit yeah, back get, in there. Yeah, to get this guy to play football. You see the body on their mascot? <laughs> He's a big one, isn't he? Well, I guess. Okay, the Cougars come out of the huddle on a fourth down and short yardage. Now the officials sent him back. So wait a minute, we're not quite ready to mark the ball for play. Two and a half to go in the first half. The Rainbows leading at three to nothing. Hawaii will be at home next week against Oregon. You know, the last two years in the WAC, the league champions have had two losses. Boy, the total offense is pretty close now. The Rainbows by 10. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the coaches I've talked to, they don't think that uh, you can win over two losses this year. Fourth down. Yeah. Oh, BYU made a mistake. That's Pilgrim. A Cougar offensive lineman made a mistake. He moved before the snap. And so now it looks like BYU will bring in David Water. Well, the crowd has to love what they've done to help this club. Watch 70, right guard. They're going to run off the right side. He's going to double with Edwards. So Lauder will try the field goal. He missed one, but not by much earlier for four, from 47 yards out. This one will be from the 26 or a 36 yard attempt for Lauder. Who, as we mentioned, did not play last year, set off the year, was the regular kicker two years ago. Watch a paratrooper in the middle. It's blocked. Yeah. They got it. So That's the Cougars are turned away once again. And you can give the crowd a lot of credit, too. Matthew Harding got in a block that. The little guy only weighs 145. That's not an accident, though. He's done that before. Watch Harding come around that left side. Boy, that's good quickness. Big explosion by Harding. So Hawaii keeps the lead. They're ahead three to nothing. BYU putting a lot of pressure on them, but they're not breaking. And Glenn Freitas will come in at quarterback for his second offensive series. First and ten, Hawaii from their own 20. I think Harding at least dance with BYU. I believe they recruited him a little bit. Look for the option here, Jay. Well, he had the big catch here a couple years ago. Still with the ball. That was the uh, flip back on the option play. Turning the corner to get to the 26-yard line. Veneri took the pitch. He's the right slot back. And Shea Muirbrook tackled him. It's an old cliche, but I tell you, this quarterback takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. <laughs> he gets <laughs> drilled. <laughs> He's in there strictly to run the option. Of course, you got to be careful. He'll stick it in that running back's gut and let him run up the middle. Second and four for the Rainbows in their own 26. A 
long count. Freitas with the ball. Hands off to the right side. Alo Alo might have the first down with a good second effort. Backed his way forward. John Pollock for BYU is playing now in particular with uh, DeMuni out of there. See that? No, it is not enough for the first down. Just short. So the clock running with a minute 28 to go in the half. And the Rainbows have third down. And uh, less than a yard to go for the first down. Freitas tries to sneak forward himself, and I think he's got it. There's also a flag down by the headlinesman. Offside on the defense, five yard penalty. First down. So the Cougars are called with an offside penalty. The Rainbows had the first down either way. And it looks right like there we on the might, inside. We might have a 3 0 halftime game, which would not be what anyone expected from these two. And I think Bob Wagner would be very satisfied to go in after dodging a bullet just moments ago. And that's why he's got his option quarterback in and not his thrower. Freitas still with the ball after taking the handoff, being chased. Here's his pass. It is incomplete. They tried to set up a screen, but it didn't work. Well, I'm not sure any of the linemen got the call. <laughs> the back and the quarterback did. <laughs> I didn't see anybody out leading. Stops the clock with 50 seconds to go in the half. Be second and 10. Glenn Freitas. One out of two passing. He's a sophomore. Glover is a junior. They also have Johnny Macon, a freshman. Who is the third unit quarterback? Breda sends Cunningham in motion to the right. Gives it up the middle. No gain. Maybe a yard. Alo Alo carried the ball. And uh, Randy Brock pulled him down in a hurry. Now BYU may take a timeout. Brock's a big kid. Yes, he is. 6'6", 250, state champ in the discus. Spent a lot of time this year in the offseason getting ready for this season. He's gained some weight and some strength. So the Cougars call timeout. They'd still like to uh, get the football one more time, or at least force the Rainbows into a punting situation. They're quicker on defense this year. That was a big concern last year. The Rainbows will face third down at about eight. Rodney Glover comes back in at quarterback on the th on the uh, third down play. Well, let's see if they throw the launch here. We have less than a minute to go. In fact, about 35 seconds to go in half number one. Now BYU's up in a bump coverage. That means they're going to have to get some help from the uh, safeties. It's too deep. It's five under too deep. This could be real interesting, Jay. All right, Glover. Glover, Glover rolls to the left looking. Now he'll run it. It's got a lot of room to the 50, to the BYU 40-yard line. It goes out of bounds right there. Boy, he got not only the yardage they needed for a first down, but a lot more. And they might get close enough for a shot at a field goal. Boy, did, uh, did they get a block that time? 25-yard run. By Lee. And it just wasn't anybody there. Glover takes off. Nobody had contained. You expect Freitas to run, but not Glover. And uh, Jay, you're absolutely right. You hit one, call a timeout. You got a got an opportunity to kick a field goal. First down of the BYU 40. Here's Glover rolling to the right this time. Sets up, throws deep, way downfield, and it is incomplete. Incomplete. The official signaled a touchdown for a moment, then saw the ball bouncing free. It was intended for Harding. Claire Gosman had the hands up and then saw the ball come loose. I thought they might get called for face guarding right here. Here it is. Now let's see what happens here. Jamie Cook is back deep for BYU. See the signal? He signaled a touchdown and then yeah. said no. That's the right call. Glover was celebrating. He thought he had one. Oh no. 
You got to be careful if you're doing this now. I saw that call today. Hey, you're supposed to celebrate a little bit. You got to use a little judgment. I thought it was a poor call today in that Cincinnati game. Well, now we have a timeout call. The Rainbows went for a TD and they just about had it. Time now, 24 seconds. Line of scrimmage, the BYU 40. Rodney Glover is the quarterback. There's a slot the run option. You try and fool somebody here, get in position. He's rolling to the right. He's looking. He's being chased, and he's hit. Slips the tackle. Is knocked out of bounds at the 40, maybe the 39-yard line. Travis Hall, good defensive play for BYU. And your best tackler in that situation is always the boundary. 17 seconds left. Got to hit one if you're uh, serious about a field goal. You know, with all that running, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. So it is third down and still 10 yards to go for a first down. Last two years have been wild. Two games. Well, they stopped BYU by blocking a short field goal attempt. Now they've moved to uh, a scoring opportunity or possibility, put it that way. Lover straight back to pass. Being chased, gets it off, and it's... Did he catch it? Yeah, he did. Nice catch. And yeah, they got a shot of the field goal Nice now. catch at the 30-yard line. Kubiawa. Kubiyama caught that one. Here it is. Well, I'll tell you, the coverage is pretty good. That's a great sure effort. It was. That was Dermel Reed. He couldn't believe he caught it. 11 seconds now left in the half, and that's a first down as they are now on the BYU 29-yard line. And the Bows have a timeout left, so they'll try and get the kid just a little closer shot here. University of Hawaii with another first down, but with only 11 seconds to go in the half. Here's Glover straight back. The two has got him. He gets the pass off. It's incomplete. Shooting right through the middle was John Ross, and he had his arms around Glover before he even turned around, so he had to throw it. It's incomplete. He is quick. Now seven seconds. And he weighs seconds. 260 pounds. Still with the timeout left. You want to throw a quick out? And I think Bob. Now they're going to try it now. They have bring the kicker in. This is Box to Beal. As we say, won the job in the spring. Carlton Oswald was there place kicker, field goal kicker last year. He'll kick from the 42-yard uh, line. Freitas holds the ball, or the 36-yard line. Here's the kick. At a lot of distance. It is no good. He missed it. So he missed it, so both uh, teams have had a couple of field goal opportunities in this game and failed. We have two seconds left on the clock. Yeah, there's a look at Stabile. He was wide right. The guy we saw two years ago Got big money from the Denver Broncos. Jason Elam, third round pick. They usually don't pick kickers in the NFL. They usually bring them in as free agents. Well, BYU has the ball with two seconds left to go. The score is still three to nothing. The University of Hawaii leading Brigham Young University. Remember to open the second half. Hawaii won the coin toss and elected to or deferred to the second half. BYU's not going to gamble at all right now. They're just going to drop on the ball. And go to the halftime dressing room behind by a field goal. The Cougars have not scored in the first half. The Rainbows have three. And at halftime, it's Hawaii three, BYU nothing. Harding is the one deep man. And uh, Kubiyama is the other. Harding, the 5'9", 145-pound speedster from San Dimas, California. And Kubiyama is from right here in Honolulu. So a lot are ready to kick off for BYU. Hot and humid night in Honolulu. And the Rainbows lead at three to nothing. As we still got two quarters to go. Here's Lauder, the left uh, footed kick. He'll drive it back to about the three yard line. Harding's got it there to the 10. He's out over the 20. Bumped away and retreats and is knocked down at the 23 yard line. Covering Lane Hale for BYU made that tackle. He's a sophomore out of Danville, California. And a good form tackle. They alternated quarterbacks in the first half. Freitas mainly for the option Glover to throw. 
and both had their moments. All right, rainbow ball, line of scrimmage is the 23-yard line of Hawaii, and we start the third quarter of this game. Glenn Freitas is the quarterback to open the second half. He ran the option well in the first half. Long count, fakes it up the middle, trips as he starts off with the ball himself. He faked it to the fullback, then started to run the option and fell down. Get one of those lines. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> Tell you what's embarrassing is when the quarterback goes back to pass, it's on the line, and he steps on a guard's foot. He pulled. You see that happen a lot. So second and eleven. Here's the ball back a yard. Second down. They need eleven then, as they pointed out. And the Rainbows lead it three nothing as we open this third period. If he goes up on the line, block. On the count. Yeah, Fakes it up the middle. He's still got it. Running the option. He's knocked out balance and down at the line of scrimmage. Muirbrook was back there for BYU. And also Stan Ross. So both middle linebackers playing together in the 4-2 uh, setup that they're using. They use a safety to play the wide side of the field. Muirbrook was a blue chip All-American in high school. CU and UCLA both recruited him. Third down. They got the yard back, so it's third and ten. For the University of Hawaii, still on their 23 yard line. Spread them out, one way wide left, way wide, wide right. Motion man to the right. Freitas back to pass, unloads it in a hurry into the middle as he was hit as he threw it. It is not enough for the first down. Veneri made the catch, and he was tackled quickly by Corey Cook. Good coverage by BYU. Corey did a great job, the 185 pound junior. He was all conference at Ricks. The Rainbows bring in their punter, Stephen Wilson. The Cougars drop back, Johnston. You know, Cook was the player of the decade back in his area. That's something, player of the decade. The highest snap, but he got it and gets the kick away. The line drives it. It takes a Hawaii bounce and rolls on by a BYU player, but there's also a flag down. The ball rolled dead all the way down to the 20. That was a high snap. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a break. He has Wilson got it away and had a good roll to it. Let's see what this flag is. It's at the 42. He kicked that from the 12-yard line, too. Well, the officials all waiting to talk it over. That's against BYU. Hawaii says it's on BYU. So we'll wait for the call. Well, that changes field position. There's a block in the back, but the ball is in the air. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the kick. Boy, that will put the Cougars in the hole. Big time. So the Rainbows have been stopped dead by the BYU defense. Wilson turns a bad snap, as you just saw there, into a pretty good punt, gets a good roll on it, and then the Cougars make an error, toss them ten more yards, so the line of scrimmage is going to be back around the ten-yard line. BYU 90 yards away and trailing by a score of three to nothing. Just a reversal of being position and then some. See what the BYU team uh, has talked about at halftime, what they might try to do offensively. They'd hope to get the running game going. They did not uh, do much with that in the first half. Walsh will pass. He fakes once and then will throw it deep. And it is caught. Was he out of bounds? Well, that's a completed pass. That's a completed pass at the 38-yard line. That is a now flag. a flag goes down, which may be unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, they question that official's berth. Carlos Anderson covering. It was Mike Johnson who made a sensational catch. You only have to bring one foot down in bounds in college football. The official, Dick Cotty, is right there. Well, you know what he says that the guy knocked him out of bounds. Well, they did rule a completion, and then a flag was thrown down after Hawaii protested rather strongly. Here's the call. The receiver went out of bounds on his own, came back and caught the pass. They have an illegal touching, lost it down, second down at the previous spot. Wow, that penalty's against BYU. You know, the official marked the football, and then the flag came. <laughs> Robbie Bosco, <laughs> he's gonna. That vein's got to go back in his forehead. 
Robbie, who uh, led the Cougars to a national championship <laughs> in the mid 80s. There's Lavelle Edwards. Well, they said Johnston went out of bounds, came back in, and caught it. Well, looking at <laughs> looking at that, it was hard to see. He definitely wound up out of bounds. I thought the call was that he was pushed out of bounds by uh, the DB, and then the guy said something. Instead, it goes the other way. So it is second down for BYU, a loss of down. Takes a handoff, still with the ball. Here's Walsh's pass, incomplete. Intended for Nowatsky, but it was out of bounds on the sideline. The Cougars are struggling. Demetrius Henderson covering on the play. Well, there wasn't anything doing over there. That ball should have been thrown. Demetrius Henderson is all over Nowatsky. BYU will face third and ten from their own ten. And uh, they're in a circumstance now where they could give up the ball and give Hawaii great field position. Look at this coverage here. Man to man all the way. Well, we don't catch it on the side. That was a great job by Demetrius Henderson. Third and ten, BYU from their own ten. John Walsh to pass. Does pass. It's caught in the middle of the field. That's a first down. Nowatsky right in the middle. Got it, ran it to the 30. Carlos Anderson stopped him. Big play for BYU. Jay, that kind of reminded me of basketball team. Their spacing was so good. It was just a perfect pattern. Five in the pattern. And Nowatsky had it his own way as he runs a little cross. Watch all five people get in the pattern here. Check down. Make sure nothing's doing. There's a Mooley slipping out. Boy, you can't run a better pattern than that. That's just well done. This may be a play to remember in this game. Without it, the Cougars would have had to punt from their 10. Now they have a first down on their 31. Three men wide to the left. Takes a handoff. He leads one would-be tackle, but is dropped by another one. So he's dropped for a loss to the 26-yard line. Hitting him was Rod York, the junior right tackle. They make the, um, the boot action pay off the first time. And that was the last play to Nowatsky. This time, boy, he counters it. Here's the pressure coming from the outside, and then York makes the hit. Cougars facing second and 15. John Walsh quarterbacking with Nowatsky wide to the right. Johnston to the left. Chad Lewis shifts over to the right side. Here's Walsh to pass. Does pass. Nice catch. Nope, they'll say it's incomplete. I thought he had it for a moment with a diving, sliding grab. Carlos Anderson covering. McGuire going after it, but it's incomplete. Ball's down a little low, so that brings up another third down situation. Third and long. We got somebody down here for BYU. That's Johnston. Johnston. He's off the field. So BYU with third and 15. Or well, again, they may have to punt it, but they're in better field position now. Trailing three to nothing. A defensive struggle. Walsh back to pass. Hit from behind and dropped by Colby Stewart. This is a kid from Denver. They ran an eagle. That means that they cover the guards and the center. And then Stewart on an outside rush gets chores done. Big play by Kobe. Just like happens off times here in the islands. This Hawaii team, they catch fire and they do it off times against BYU. Well, we've got Boardman. After moving it out of what looked like trouble, he'll still have to kick from deep in his own territory. Back at his own four yard line. And it's Clint Kubiyama who's back waiting at the 40. Here's the kick. Good kick. To the 40-yard uh, line. Kubiyama runs it to the 45. To the 50 and is down at the BYU 46-yard line. So the Rainbows have the ball with very good field position right now. They lead Brigham Young by a score of 3 to nothing, and there's 10 and a half left in the ball game. Hawaii leading BYU by a score of three to nothing here in the third quarter of this game. We understand prime ticket in the Los Angeles Southern California has joined us on our blue white network. We welcome you to the telecast there. See, you saw the last defensive play. There's a very excited Kobe Stewart. This is third big play of the ball game. Kobe the senior rainbows have the ball at the BYU 45 on a first down and Freitas is back in at quarterback.
Freitas brings Venari in motion, then he stops. Here's the snap. Running the option, he pitches it to Venari. Venari turns the corner and is down inside the 40 yard line. Tackled by Stan Ross for BYU. Hey, this is players. Venari comes to a set position, and he's the, uh, he's the guy that you kind of lose track of on the option. Originally walked on. He's our most experienced slot. Looks like a BYU player shaken up on the play. That's Jamie Cook. They'll bring him out of the game. Look at John Venuri. Well, they gained about seven on that one, make it second and three for the Rainbows on the BYU 38 yard line. Hawaii ahead three to nothing and trying to add to the lead here in the third period. A great punt by Wilson two series ago. Really uh, gave them this good, or set up this good field position. Freitas with the ball, hands it off to the left side. Might have the first down. He's over the uh, 35, so I think he has it. Stan Ross, the tackler for BYU. And when the, Glenn Carson, the ball carrier. When the Bows had uh, Travis Sims, they really made that thing go. Saw him at training camp with the Denver Broncos. He was legitimate. Have a feeling guy might surface in the World Football League. First and ten Hawaii on the Brigham Young 35. He was playing without Jack Mooney now too is injured earlier in this game. Fakes it once, keeps it himself, goes into the middle and is down. Got a couple. John Pollock, the tackler. Jay Monson along with Irv Brown of the Blue and White Network. We hope you're enjoying the telecast of this game from Honolulu, Hawaii. BYU and the University of Hawaii in the first game of the year for both schools and an important whack game. Second down about six for the University of Hawaii from the 31 yard line of BYU. Freda still has the football and he's hit. Hit hard by Pollock of BYU as he turns the corner fell forward for a yard or so I'm sure his coordinator Paul Johnson will talk to him about that one that was a pitch decision you should take a look at John Pollock who has come in for Demuni and has played effectively well the rainbows have third down and about four and a half yards to go for a first down they split a man wide to the left also have one wide to the right Freitas with the ball. There's the late pitch. Gets it to Veneri. Veneri tries to turn that corner and can't. BYU's got a well covered this time. A lot of Cougars in on the stop. They uh, they had that play stopped almost from the start. Jamie Cook leading the way. That's the first time they've shown counter option as you take a look at Lavelle Edwards. And BYU with the answer there. Good defense. Now the Rainbows have a decision. Go for the yardage. Punt. Field goal. They have uh, Stabile and Box Stabile, so he's their place kicker. And he will try a field goal from the 37 yard line, a 47 yard attempt. Stabile's the difference in this game so far. He has a field goal, and that's the only point of the game. Three, point, three points for Hawaii. Here's the kick, drives it pretty hard, and he drove it through there. So Stabile has a field goal for the second time in the game. And there's time out on the field with Hawaii now leading by a score of six to nothing. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Stabile to kick off for Hawaii. Here's that uh, field goal that they made just a moment ago to double their lead. The key here is the snap and the hold. And both are there. And here's Stabile's kickoff. We have Ottawa and Bloomfield back deep. And Ottawa will take it at the 10. Comes for the near sidelines to the 15 to the 20. And down hard at the 26 yard line. Nice return by Atawaya, who's a sophomore for BYU. From Laia, Hawaii. So the Cougars have really been stopped by this quick, scrambling Hawaii defense. Trying to get something going. They're down now by a score of 6 0. It's been interesting watch their, watching their defensive fronts. They'll leave. Uh, They'll leave you uh, some running room to one side or another. Now they're in the three man front. The Cougars run against it with Jamal Willis. Jamal breaks it. He's to the 40 to the 42 yard line. Nice run by Jamal Willis. 
Hagenhardt Ellis is the tackler. He that followed the blocking very nicely. Did a that good time. job. And that time Hawaii was trying to jump into a four-man front late, and it, it just doesn't happen. And Willis, who is an athlete, he was an all-state basketball player down in Las Vegas, Nevada. You'll hear from his uh, coach about carrying the football in his right hand, though. That's how you get it knocked out. You got to carry it in the left arm. He sidestepped Fauve to get open and pick up the big gainer. First down, BYU from the 42. They're going to run it again. And they're not going to get anything this time. Well, that was a mix up. Yeah, Jamal Willis had the ball. Demetrius Henderson makes the tackle. Him and Himuli almost ran into each other. First game. <laughs> Take a look here. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> hey, Mooley, wait, wait, wait a minute. You said 20. Nice you it. said 28. <laughs> Cougars have scored in 235 consecutive games, the longest streak in the NCAA. But they're in danger of not doing it again here tonight as they have second and 13. Look at this set. Here's Walsh. Here's his pass. It's complete out of the backfield, but they gain only about three yards to Jamal Willis. Jason Ross is the tackler. I have really been impressed with the secondary of Hawaii. They've been forced to play man because it's been a stunt most sets, most downs, I should say. They've hung with their man. The BYU team has league games, WAC games, their first four games this year. Hawaii, next week Air Force, then at home against Colorado State and New Mexico. Same thing last year. They jumped up 4-0. All right, BYU with third and ten near midfield. John Wash needs a good one here. Throws it down deep, and it is incomplete. Couldn't get it to his tight end. Lindsey Yao covering, and they tried to go to Chad Lewis, the tight end, and BYU will be forced to punt. Well covered, and the ball was overthrown. So it's... Uh, He's passed for 155 yards now. Started out very promising as uh, Willis picked up a first down and then Hawaii stiffens. So the Cougars will kick as Alan Boardman's into punt. Kubiana is the deep man for the University of Hawaii. Hawaii leading six to nothing with five and a half to go in the third quarter. Here's the kick. Almost There's a flag. He got it away. It goes down. It's down to the 18 yard line. Kubiano back up to the 30. There's a flag down. Did they hit? Boardman? Yeah, they hit the punter. That could be the break of the game. Now let's see if it's five or. Uh... Yeah, you got a flag down here, too. So the officials will have to uh, make some decisions now. You got a roughing the punter. Roughing the kicker. And you got a clip, it looks like. And an illegal, uh, illegal use of the hands downfield. The defensive unit is on the field as the officials try to straighten things out. Following tonight's game, watch for the Sheraton play of the game presented by Sheraton Hawaii Resorts. And the officials still talking it over. There are two flags down. BYU seems to think it favors them. Well, they definitely ran into the punter. Let's check with Holly. Holly Rowe. We're here with Jack DeMooney. Jack, you've got to be disappointed to be on the sidelines instead of in playing right now. Yeah. How's the shoulder feeling? Uh, well, it just popped out of place, but, um, you know, the doctors told me just give it a week and I'll be back next week. Now, you walked over to the sideline and had a gentleman from the stand start rubbing on your shoulder. Who was that and what was he doing? Uh, that was my uncle. He always, uh, every time I get injured when I used to play in high school or, um, or whenever I played any sport, if I get injured, he always like massage my uh, my ankles or my you know my check on my shoulders. So that's my uncle from uh, back in Laie. So you know he came down and I seen him. So I just checked. He said it's all right. Okay, glad to glad to see you're okay. We'll see you back on the on the field in a couple of weeks. Back to you guys. Okay, as they talk, the penalties over. I guess were they offsetting? I really I'm couldn't sure. hear it. They yeah, ran. Hear what I said. thought it was a uh, an illegal block. Regardless, Hawaii will have the football. And now the officials are still talking things over. It's the BYU defense. I thought both penalties were against the Bows. I did too. 
Well, now they're well obviously back we're wrong. <laughs> right. So it's on the 12-yard line. So Hawaii. You know what it was? It wouldn't have been a first down. Oh, that's right. That's why. No doubt there was an illegal block, but we're not sure in the first one. It must have been just the uh, five-yard penalty, which wouldn't have been a first down. So the Rainbows with Freitas in at quarterback. He fakes. Now he will pass. And it's Look at this. It, was it intercepted? It sure is. It sure is. It was deflected and intercepted by BYU, and the Cougars get the big break of the game as Travis Hall comes up with the football. Pressure from the backside. We'll need to pick that up in the replay because this could be the play of the game. Watch it come from the right side. So he fakes the handoff. Here it is right there. There's the hit. And that's Travis Hall. So BYU with the <laughs> football at the 11-yard line. You can't pick up a first down. He just had to wait for that one to come back down to I'd love to find out who made the hit because that was the play. What if they ruled it a pass or a fumble? No, oh, it was an intercepted pass. Coming forward with the arm. All right. First and 10, BYU. On the Hawaii 11-yard line. And the crowd trying to help him out. They'll run it with Jamal Willis. Jamal tripped up. Did he fumble the ball? Nope, it was down. He did fumble it, but the officials say the ground caused it. Lindsey Yao made the tackle. It is not a possession-changing fumble. That was the old USC sweep. Student body left. They pull a guard. They pull a tackle. Somehow, somebody gets involved here. Boy, he got an injury. This looks like a shoulder. Or it's a BYU player that is injured on the play. It's a lineman. As you look at the Lavelle Edwards, the ball was down. There will be a break in the action. The player injured is Tim Hanshaw, senior defensive lineman. So it's still six nothing. Five minutes to go in the third quarter, and timeout on the field. All right, BYU and Hawaii as we. Uh, Look at that last play. See, this is uh, Willis. Well, that's Lindsey with the effort there. That was a terrific play because there was a, a nice contingent of blockers out there. Second down. And William Knight comes in to replace the injured Hanshaw. He's a 350-pound junior. Second and goal for BYU. It's the draw to Ottawa and nothing doing. He doesn't get anything as Ed Ripley stops him. So the Cougars face third down now. Here's Holly Rowe. Holly? Once again, we've got a left shoulder problem. Tim Hanshaw is being worked on on the sidelines. They are looking at his left shoulder. The doctors confirm him right now, but he is in a lot of pain. Brigham Young with a third. Third down. They need about uh, six for a first down. They're on the eight-yard line. Walsh looking for a scoring pass. He's got it. It's a touchdown to Mealy in the end zone. Etila Mealy for BYU just off an LDS mission. He's from right here in Hawaii. Laia caught it. Boy, when it's like Walsh's eyes lit up when he saw him open. He lined that into him. And he wasn't the primary receiver. Primary receiver was Nowatsky. Here's Water trying to put the Cougars ahead for the first time in the game. His kick is good. So Nowatsky got it down and Lauder kicked it through. And following that interception then, BYU gets a score on a pass from Walsh to Mealy. And the Cougars have now scored in 236 consecutive games. Protection is good. Looks to the left. I thought he wanted to go to Nowatsky wide open. Mealy, boy, I tell you what. He says, I'm home. You can't celebrate too much. But what I saw today in that Cincinnati Indiana game. So what a big break. And Jay, the, the one thing that uh, disappoints me is we couldn't pick up who made the hit on Freitas. That caused the ball to go up in the air. It was an easy pick for Hall, but the key uh, play was made by the guy coming around the right, the side. right I, side. I couldn't get him. Mealy played as a second team player before going on his mission as a freshman and has some speed and size. And now he scores before his family right here in Hawaii. And BYU leads it by a score of 7 to 6. And we have four minutes left to play in the third quarter of this game. And we may well have 
The same kind of finish that we always have here in the island. Seems like that's uh, what we're heading for. First games are strange. This is nothing new. Lauder will kick off for the second time in the game. Second time in this quarter. Harding and Kubiyama are the deep men for the University of Hawaii. Here's the kick. Kicks this one pretty well. In fact, he kicked it clear into the end zone. He got the wind with him now. Looks like he had out of the end zone. So it's a touchback. And Hawaii will take over first and 10 of their own 20. Brigham Young, 7. University of Hawaii, 6. Decision time once again, though, for Bob Wagner. Who do you go with the quarterback? Looks like he's going to stay with Freitas. Here's That's a scoring drive, Jay. And uh, once again, it was the pick by Hall. And a crucial third down pass by Walsh as he picks out the open man. Boy, was he open. First and 10, Hawaii from their own 20 then. And Freitas is running the offense. Offside. Freitas, it's a reverse. And they're going to pass off the reverse. And here's the throw, and it is caught at the 45 yard line. No, was it intercepted? Oh, it's incomplete. Oh, it's incomplete. All right. Corey Cook was able to strip it free. I thought it was cut. Well, this will be for the highlight film because there was a lot of action there. Boy, there was a lot of room to run, too. They throw the football. That's the time to do it on first down. Looked like they had something going. That's Kubiyama who threw it. Boy, I tell you, Cook almost stole it, didn't he? Yeah, he did everything but steal it. Well, that was exciting. And if they don't use it for the highlight film, they can use it for the Christmas party. <laughs> it was well done. Well, the first pass of the game for Clint Kubiyama. Kubiyama, probably the first pass of his career. Second and 10 from the 20 for the Rainbows. Freitas drops back to throw, does throw, and it's caught at the 30. He wrestles his way to the 33-yard line. Reed for BYU. Pulls him down. It's Kubiyama who caught it. It's a first down throw. They've made a living with that particular pattern tonight. They like catch the uh, Cougar cornerbacks a little deep. Too much cushion. And they uh, take advantage of it. Pick up the first. Dermel Reed is the J.C. transfer for BYU out of Oakland, California. Has been confirmed. Hanchar with the, the dislocated left shoulder. Will not return. First down, here's Freitas. Little swing pass over the left side. Cunningham has it. He's upended at the 35-yard line by Mitchell for BYU. And that's not one for the time capsule. That's uh, one that you kind of give away, and there isn't much going on. A lot of folks from BYU around the football. Gains a couple of yards. So it's second down and eight for the Rainbows, who now trail BYU by a point. Len Freitas, who traded off with uh, the starter Rodney Glover in the first half, has gone both of the first two series here in the second half. He was coming after him. He flips it to the right pass. side. They're going to throw off it again, and it is incomplete at the BYU 47-yard line. Kubiyama tried to get it, but for BYU, Dermale Reed made a good defensive play. Well, I got to tell you, they're throwing everything at BYU. That was a nice little call, and somehow Reed had the instincts to get back and make the play. The crowd wanted a pass interference call. Don't get it. Let's check with Holly. Holly Rowe. Roger French has just called the entire offense around him. He told them they have got to quit playing just to be out there. They've got to play to win. They're running around helter skelter and each player needs to know what his assignment is. A big pep talk by Roger French here on the sidelines. Third and eight for the Rainbows. Here's Freitas back to pass into the middle of the field but it's knocked down once again and I believe that was uh, was a unifoli. Yeah okay. Travis Hall also there for BYU. He's played a, an excellent football game. Punting situation coming up for uh, the Bows. Here's Travis Hall. It was. It. Well, they'll have to punt her. Mm -hmm. So Wilson in to kick for BYU. It's Johnston back deep. We have 2.43 to go in the third period of this game, and BYU leads it 7-6. 
This thing turned around when uh, BYU actually had their punter rough. Wasn't good for the first down, but a penalty really killed This is dangerous. Well, he picked up that rolling football on the run and was knocked down. That is Mike Johnson again. Holly Rowe. Holly? I'm standing here with Mr. Les Moore, the president of the Polynesian Cultural Center. And uh, you've got to be pretty excited about some of the players here who uh, have been playing tonight. Oh, I'm absolutely delighted. Our Polynesian Cultural Center boys, two of them, Demuni intercepted, immediately just got a touchdown. We're, we're just thrilled about it. Now, the Cultural Center is a, a place where students are able to put themselves through college. I understand since 1963, over 26,000 students have worked their way through college there. That is correct. The Polynesian Cultural Center, that's one of the primary purposes it was set up for, is to provide an opportunity for the students to go to school, gain their education, and also be able to work. In addition to that, the Polynesian Cultural Center sponsors about 50% of their education. So Tula Millie, he worked there at the center this summer, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, and Jack DeMooney worked there uh, just prior to going out to the uh, BYU. All right, thanks very much for joining Thank you. us. Thank you. Back to you guys. Well, nice pass from Walsh for Kyle McGuire, but uh, Kyle missed it. He had some good defensive pressure, but it was also catchable. Ball was right there. That's one Kaipo would like to have another shot. Look at Walsh with the shot. One more time. Pocket pass. Big BYU lineman hang in there, and Kaipo unable to make the play, and the ball was there. And Walsh was an excitable guy. Second and 10 for BYU from the Cougar 26 yard line. Nowatsky in motion. Walsh on the draw. And it's fumbled. It's fumbled. And I think Hawaii has it. They knocked it out of the hands of uh, of Hamuli. Cox did it along with Father. Second time that uh, Hamuli has fumbled tonight. Here's the draw. Boy, I tell you, that, that's just yanked out. That's well done. Give credit to Cox, who's been all over the field. Pretty good nose guard. So the Rainbows have the opportunity to regain the lead. They've got the ball in the Cougar 26 yard line. BYU leading 7 to 6. Glover is back in at quarterback. Glover back to throw under a lot of pressure. Floats it downfield and it is. I can't tell from where we are. Flags go down. We have a difficult time from our booth seeing the right side. Vermel Reed covering for BYU, but there are flags down in the end zone. Well, Reed ran into him. Had a pretty good angle, Jay. As you look at a very concerned coach, Kubiyama was in the end zone. Kubiyama's the one shaken up. Here it is, all over him, and the call is the correct call. Both the side judge and the back judge. So the Rainbows in good scoring position now they have no touchdowns they have two field goals but they're down deep in BYU territory with 215 to go in the third period a Cougar turnover has given them this opportunity they're still working on Kubiyama in the uh, end zone as we walk off the penalty against BYU the ball will go down to the 11 yard line First and 10, Hawaii on the BYU 11. Following tonight's game, watch for the Sheraton play of the game presented by Sheraton Hawaii Resorts. But we're waiting for uh, Kubiyama to be uh, helped off the field before we can play any more football. Kubiyama Jr. out of Honolulu. Well, he's setting up, so that's a good sign. Played at Boston College, transferred there, or back from there to Hawaii. Warm night, a lot of injuries tonight. I understand his father was an NCAA boxing champion. That's right. You remember? <laughs> no, but no. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> he obviously could uh, handle his dukes. Well, maybe he wanted some camera time because I think he's all right. Well, he got it. He's up to his feet now. But he'll have to come out of the game for at least. Uh, he's a little wobbly. He's laughing, but maybe he doesn't know where he's laughing at. Yeah, he's laughing to say, where am I? Yeah. 
Hawaii with the first and goal. Well, they moved the ball from the 11 back out to the 13 yard line, which made it half the distance to the goal line. So the Rainbows with a great opportunity to regain the lead. They trail BYU 7 to 6. As we watch BYU coach Lavelle Edwards, who feels that he has the personnel to have a pretty good football team this year. But he didn't like to have to play the first game of the year right here and in an important league game. Yeah, that makes it tough. 1980, Lavelle Edwards had the first 12, uh, 12 game winning season for BYU. Okay, here are the Rainbows with quarterback Rodney Glover running the team. 13 yards away from the score. Glover, almost a uh, quarterback delay. He makes it to the five yard line. It looked like they had him in the backfield. Well, that's a play and play, quarterback draw. And Glover got a good block off that right side. And Corey Cook pulled him down short of the goal line. There's also a flag down in the secondary. That's a face mask. Face mask on BYU. So the Rainbows really have an excellent opportunity for a touchdown. They have not made it into the end zone of this game so far. They have two field goals. And it was the fumble recovery that gave them the opportunity. Here's the end of the play. The see the face mask. First and goal Hawaii on the BYU two and a half yard line. Got a great block from Kelly McGill. Hey, he's their best lineman. He bounced back and forth. Tackle the center. Did a good job. Okay, the Rainbows trying to get in the end zone and take the lead. Glover calling signal. Glover running with the ball himself. Might have made it. He did. Glover has scored. So Hawaii has six more points. Figures were offside, but the Rainbows will refuse a penalty and take the score. Well, this should be a two-point conversion, too, if you want to stay on schedule. As you look at Lavelle Edwards, they cut it short. Glover, instead of running the option outside, cuts back at the uh, seven hole, makes a roll. Now, let's see if they go for two here. You got to make sure you do it without calling a timeout. They're raising that net. I'm not sure they're going to need it here. It is a timeout. And to stay on schedule here, that is the strategy. The score is 12 to 7. BYU. All right, watch the option here. They run it off tackle instead of going outside. He cuts it in. Kubiyama had his win knocked out. He will be able to play more in this game. That particular option, they almost run it off the guard. But they cut it short and do a good job. So Hawaii, after giving up the ball in a turnover, and the Cougars scoring the first points of the game, the lead seven to six, they get a fumble and. Uh, turn it into a score with the help of a BYU pass interference penalty. So it is now 12 to 7 Hawaii leading and we'll see if they do go for the two point conversion. I think they will. Roger French the Cougar offensive coordinator offensive line coach. We still got a quarter to go a quarter along with a minute 54 in the third period. So this game is far from over. That's not to read lips Jake. <laughs> a couple of years ago Hawaii led all the way and BYU scored to take the lead and the Cougars only had to protect the football later in the game and fumbled it away and Hawaii scored on two big plays to beat them. We might have the same kind of a finish in this game. Well the Rainbows are in with their regular offense with Glover at quarterback. Glover has just scored his first touchdown of the year. And now they'll go for a two point conversion. We're ready. Glover rolling to the right, looking back to the left, wants to throw. Nobody to throw it to. Knocked off balance and down. They don't get it. Glover was knocked off balance. He couldn't get away. And BYU stops the two point try. 
So the Cougars trail 12 7 now as the Rainbows have just taken the lead. And a big hand in that play was John Ross. Two brothers who came over from Rick's Junior College. They're twins. Both were born in Tonga. So it's to be already with his team back out in front for the BYU team. And here's his kick. It'll go out of bounds without getting into the end zone. So BYU has the option of having to kick it again or they can take it upfield. And that kick would not make Coach Wagner any too happy, will it? The kickers are always in trouble anyway because coaches believe they're never supposed to make a mistake. <laughs> they get to practice by themselves most of the time. Excellent field position for the Cougars. Gives it the ball on the 35 yard line. You saw the story of total offense. The Hawaii spread, they, they uh, do a nice job the way they block it. They give you a lot of problems, a lot of looks. You know, for the BYU team, I know it's first game of the year, but they haven't really put together a sustained drive today. No, just hadn't happened. Here's John to Lewis at all. Here's John Walsh at quarterback. He's going to pass. He does pass. Nice catch by Jamal Willis. Had to reach him back of him, and he was falling down as he caught it. With him was uh, Argon Hart Ellis. Not a first down, a throw good for six yards. Which keeps you right on schedule. As you take a look at the clock, this is in the third period. Those of you watching uh, on the East Coast, it's 4 a.m. There's a little, uh, whoa, look at this. <laughs> Whoops. How you doing, guys? Second down and four for BYU. The official okay. doing a little housekeeping out there. I'll tell you what, you're talking about almost 600 pounds right there. One guy weighs 300, the other guy 270. By the way, Tim Hanshaw did get hurt for BYU, their senior starting left guard. Replacing him is William Knight, who's a junior from Lancaster, California. And Irv, he weighs in at 350. I'll tell you what, they just get bigger and bigger. Second down, they'll run it. That's Jamal Willis. He gets a good block, turns the corner, has got the first down. I got to tell you something. Evan Pilgrim does what he does best, in my opinion. He pulls, he leads, and he pancakes a linebacker. Now, Willis can uh, can run that sweep. I got to tell you something. This guy can get out and do it. But, uh, credit number 70, Evan Pilgrim. Watched him do this all last year. Jason Ross, the tackler. We've got a minute to go in the third period. Hawaii leading 12 to 7, and BYU on it with a first down. A movie comes in motion, Walsh back to pass, throws quickly, completes it to the 49 yard line of Hawaii. The Rainbows say no, he trapped that one. The officials say he got it. That's Mike Johnston for BYU. Short yardage is uh, Johnston has to go down. The ball's thrown low. And here it is. Got to make the catch first things first. Does he catch the ball? Hard to, hard to say. The official said he did. <laughs> yeah. That takes care of that. Right? Official on that side, Dick Cotty, is the winning of basketball coach in the state of Colorado, high school guy. Second and seven for BYU. He's a stunt. Willis juggling the football, but gets control of it and runs it to the rainbow, what, 46 yard line. That's not a first down. But they're just uh, about three yards away as the third period ends. After three quarters of play, it's Hawaii 12, Brigham Young 7. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Quarter number four, ready to get underway from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Jay Monson and Irv Brown with Holly Rowe on the sidelines. And the Cougars have the ball at the rainbow 45 and a half yard line. They need about two and a half yards for a first down. And it's third down. And they trail by five points. So here's BYU splitting two men to the right. Johnston is the wide man. Keep it on the right side, Jay. No, nope, they've got a man in motion. Look for one of the backs. Here's Walsh dancing around. Fumbles the ball, and a lineman grabs it. And now a flag goes down. Walsh had the ball knocked out of his hands, but a big lineman grabbed it. Brady is one of the men to hit him. 
Yeah, that's that ain't going to work. Lyman can't do that, so this will be a punting situation. Good rush, good coverage that time by the Bows. I thought the ball was knocked out of his hands, though. Here's the call. The ball is caught by an illegal receiver. Five yard penalty. Lost it down. First down. So the Cougars are stopped, and they'll have to give it up as Boardman will punt from his 35. The Rainbows have uh, Demetrius Henderson back as the receiver. This is the start of the fourth quarter with Hawaii leading 12 to 7. The snaps there. Got the kick away. Pretty good punt. To the 17 yard line of fair catch. I'm not sure he signaled that. I don't that, think though. he did. You know something? The crowd is yelling, but I didn't see the signal. I didn't either. I didn't see a signal. Strange things go. Bob Wagner said, I saw it. <laughs> the hit was not a hard hit. He simply took him down. But Bob is saying, hey, wait a minute, he signaled. But there's no call. The ball's going to be down right there. And Hawaii leading by five will take over on about their own 16 yard line. If he signaled, he did it uh, about the time they punted. Let's see. Watch. Oh, he oh, did. He did. He, he got did a right signal. hand up there. I'll tell you what. Rodney Glover in a quarterback. He definitely signaled for a fair catch. Now, he didn't have his hand up very high, but he still made the signal. Glover completes it to the 21 yard line. Almost overthrew his man, but he got it to him. That is uh, Brandon Kennedy. Patrick Mitchell made the tackle. Mitchell's had a strong game. What kind of job did he do hurdling this spring? He didn't do too much in track this particular year, but he's going to come back uh, next year. But he was the WAC champ for two years. Second down and four for the Rainbows. See if they run the option or uh, hit up the gut. They'll do that just when you uh, you can't stay away from it. It is option. Glover running it. Oh, he ran right into a Cougar a Cougar tackler. Ran right into Randy Brock and watch for Randy to have a great year this year for BYU. 6'6, 250 senior. He was a freshman All American, a sophomore uh, All American, honorable mention whack last year. Good player. Kind of takes you off schedule. Now you got one of those in between downs. Let's see if they throw the quick hitter. Well, they have third down, about four and a half yards to go for a first down. They spread it out. Here's Glover under some pressure floats it down the, the sideline. Wait a minute. Did the play stop? I guess so. Suddenly everybody stopped but he still threw the football. Let's check with Holly Rowe. Holly. I'm standing here. I'm standing here with a, a family member of one of the players uh, number 54 George Noga and uh, Nico Noga. The, the family name goes way back. Uh, you're pretty excited to be here watching your little brother play. It was unbelievable that. Uh, Never thought it would be like this in years to come, but I guess it's early enough to, to come back here and cheer for a younger brother for for the first time. Now you spent some time away playing in the pros. Uh, you went to Phoenix right out of college in '84, and, and tell us where you've been since then. I went to uh, the Phoenix in '84 to '88, and then headed down to uh, Detroit for three more years in '92 uh, with the Raiders. So is it is it, uh, is it strange to be back here? You said you never won against the Cougars. Well, as far as I've been here for four years, and that's truly enough because I never had a chance to try to win them, but they always had to come out with good quarterbacks. So who's the best out of the Noble Good Brothers? You've had a chance to see your little bro play tonight. I know the question is, is hard to answer, but I tell you, when you watch them on like this, they're, they're the best. They're better than I am because if I wasn't, then I won't be here watching them. <laughs> okay, so here in the stands with Nico Noga watching his little brother, George. Good defensive play by Randy Brock forces uh, an incomplete pass. Ask me who the best no good. Who's the best? Al. Okay. He's a good one, right? Oh, still playing. Here's Wilson to kick. Gets the punt away. Johnston waiting for it. Signals fair catch and takes it. But now the 44. The crowd. Yeah, the crowd says, <laughs> wait a minute. Let's play it the same way at both ends of the field, huh? 
<laughs> we have about 13 minutes left to play in this football game and Hawaii leads it by five. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. Brigham Young University trying to sustain a drive right now. They trail by five. They have the ball near midfield. First and ten. Lewis shifts over the left side. The tight end. They'll run it back the other way. That's Jamal Willis following a block. He's around the corner. He's over the 50. Backing his way to the 45 to the 43 yard line. Good effort by the big guy Jamal Willis. And by far their best running play today has been the sweep with number 70 Evan Pilgrim leading. Willis gets her around the corner suddenly. And here it is. Watch 70. Boy, this is the way you're supposed to do it. You can't draw it up any better than that. And Willis keeps his feet, battles for first down yardage. Bye bye, finding the tackler. First down, BYU on the Rainbow 44. Here's a pitch, same way. Jamal Willis. Jamal bangs his way down to the 30 yard line. That's another first down run with Stewart, the tackler for Hawaii, Kobe Stewart. This could be the death drive here. A little uh, motion that time. Hemuli out leading. And Willis, with the last two efforts, got his ball club deep into. Uh, how come this guy doesn't play? This, guy, this I, guy's my guy's When main I first man. saw him tonight, I thought it was you, Irv. This is my man. <laughs> first and 10, BYU on the Hawaii 30 yard line. Hawaii leading 12 7. Same play. This is Hay Mooley this time, however. Vaults his way inside the 25 yard line. Gains about eight before Ed Ripley tackles him. Have always felt that this is the most underrated play that Lavelle runs. I watched him against Penn State, a good Penn State team, and they ran this play to perfection. Here's 70. Boy, he knows how to pull. Here's A. Mooley, who's had a tough time. Mooley's a good football player. He's just had a tough time hanging on the football tonight. Boy, you could hurt an ankle doing that. Nine yard gain. It's second down and one for BYU on the Rainbow 21. We have an injured player there. Well, here's Johnston bringing the play in for BYU. Cougars a yard away from a first down, 21 yards away from a TD. to bring Johnson wide to the right. Octawaya and Haymuli are the setbacks. They'll run it again. This is Haymuli. Hit at the line of scrimmage, but vaults his way to the 20, and I think that's enough for the first down. Carlos Anderson and uh, Nale Cox are the tacklers. Took a pretty good shot. Hangs on to the football. 11.40 left in this football game. Jack Baker will bring in the sticks. We're going to have to measure if it's going to be very close. TD Beagle for the Cougars with a pulled hamstring. Okay, well, we're going to need a Red Cross unit. Been a lot of injuries tonight, both sides. You know, last year the BYU team had 52 players who lost time because of injuries. That's a bunch. Boy, this is close. <laughs> Look at that, Irv. He's having to get down there on sight. So I think that's a quarter of an inch that he's hitting. Referee Jack shows. Baker, I'm convinced, is going to die with his spikes on playing softball. Maybe pitch when he's 80. Still doing it? Oh, sure. Well, the BYU Cougars have third down and a quarter of an inch. For Guy the first might, down. Might still be up back in the... In Utah, watch this game. Larry Miller owns a Jazz. Larry Miller used to be a, a fast pitch uh, softball pitcher over in, the, in the, the Denver area. Him and Baker used to go at it. We have 11 and a half to play. The Rainbows have the lead, 12 to 7. The Cougars have the ball, and they need very, very short yardage for a first down at well, the Rainbow 20. Well, this is four down territory. You've got to go for it if you don't pick it up. See if they run the sneak once again. They fumbled once in the third and an inch situation on a handoff to Hamuli. Walsh just takes a step to the left and jumps over the top of that great big William Knight. 
And he's got the first down. Agenhart Ellis, the tackler. Safest play in the game because you take the middle linebacker out of it. You always, are. if you're really serious about it, anybody can run a sneak and pick up a half a yard to a yard. You take the backer out of it. Those good backers. Guys like Butkus and Gratishar, they just never let it happen. If you run a running back, they meet him up high. First and ten, Brigham Young on the Rainbow 19 yard line. They've done most of the damage in this drive running the football. And this is Jamal Willis going to pass. And it's caught down at the two yard line. And Willis passed to Mike Johnston at the two. I'll tell you what happened there. I'm going to tell you how intelligent a play that was. I'm not sure if uh, Norm Chow comes up with this, or Paul French, but Hamuli slips up a half a step so that they know they're going to run the sweep and they're hollering sweep and then they throw the football. That, you know, that's like a, an infielder cheating on the double play. That was really something. Hamuli makes that play by cheating up. And then everybody's hollering, watch the sweep. Lindsey Yowell was covering. BYU first and goal on the one yard line. Jamal tries to dive into the end zone. Did he make it? He did. Jamal Willis up and over, and BYU has regained the lead. So we are having a typical BYU-Hawaii game now. Should go for two here, Jay. As the Cougars take the lead, 13 to 12. Yeah, he's over. I'll tell you, he did a great job on this drive. He was the workhorse. They only carried it one time. They didn't throw the football at all. They did it on the ground with this guy. Jamal is senior. He threw the ball. That's right. He got a completed pass. He was hurt a lot last year out of Las Vegas. A senior. Got married during the summer. His wife, Leslie. So BYU has the lead 13 to 12, and the Cougars will go for a two point conversion. Well, this is definitely the strategy here. They kick a field goal, let them tie you, and I beat you. So you want to get the lead to three. Walsh rolling to the right, looking. Here's the pass. Boy. Nope. Upset with himself. He's got a wide open Nowatsky and he misses him. Yep. So they don't make it, but they do have the lead. So there's timeout on the field with the Cougars ahead by a point. We're back at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii, where BYU now leads by a point, 13-12. Both teams had scored, went for two-point conversions. And neither one able to convert. So the Cougars will kick off now to the Rainbows, and it'll be Lauder kicking off for BYU. Oh, Zach Odom is in the game now on the kick return situation. He's been injured a bit. So Odom and Harding are the two deep men as Lauder will kick off for BYU. And here's the kick. Pretty high, fairly deep. Taken by Harding at the five. He's got 10, he's got 15, he's got 20. Oh! He bounced off one would be tackler and just kept going. He is out to the 28 yard line. Do we have a marker down? Oh, yeah, back up where the ball was kicked off. So BYU is offside. Let's see if uh, Bowes wanted to punt it again or kick it again, I beg your pardon. Well, it'll be up to Hawaii to decide. The BYU team was offside in the kickoff. The Rainbows advanced it to about the 29-yard line. Have to see what they decide. They're going to have them kick it off again. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. Yep, they want them to kick it again. There's Bob Wagner. He'll pull out all the stops on this drive. You saw reverse passes earlier. Got a lot of plays in that arsenal. Yeah. Can't emphasize enough, Jay, the con job that Hamuli pulled. That was really well done. He stepped up a step, and they're hollering sweet. It was a sweet pass. Or Willis. What did I say? Hamuli. No, hey, Mooley. Oh, that. Oh, up. I see him. Okay, he, he caused it. All he right. He caused it with a great con. Uh -huh. Made him believe to uh, have to read him, but it was going to be a sweep. Going to sweep. It was a sweep pass. All right, but it, it is Willis and Truett. What you're saying is he Mooley set it up. Okay, they'll kick off again for the 30. 
Here's water. Boy, he drives this one pretty high. It'll come down at the three yard line. Take him out to the 15 to the 20 into the middle of the field and down. In fact, I think he's a little bit short of where he was before. Harding's an exciting little runner. He got it out to the 29 before, but he's not quite that far this time. Well, he's got big play capabilities. We saw him block the field goal two years ago. Caught a crucial pass from Michael Carter. All right, quarterbacking, who will it be? It is Glover. Glover in a quarterback for the Rainbows. From his own 28 yard line. Straight back to throw. Takes, pumps, throws, and it is incomplete. Throwing that time for Brandon Kennedy. He was pretty well covered, but he overthrew him. Really put you off schedule when you're, uh, you're basically a running team like the Hawaii is. You throw on first down, now you're second and ten. As we see Coach Wagner walking the sidelines for Hawaii, what a fine job he has done here at the University of Hawaii. And 51. the biggest thing, excuse me, the biggest thing is you got to be careful when they're recruiting because people are upon you here and take the recruiting trip. Got to really make sure they're interested. Second and ten. Fakes a handoff, keeps it, backs his way to the 30 yard line. I don't know if that was a broken play or if the Cougars just uh, messed it up in the middle. Led by Travis Hall, the defensive end. I'm going to say that Coach uh, Wagner has 51 wins, 33 losses in his eighth year. Well, and look at the crowd here. I mean, it's just, uh, this is really big time. Well, he's beaten BYU three times in seven tries, too. No one else in the WAC has done that in the last 10 years. People used to want to come over here uh, 20 years ago because you get a vacation out of it and you whip them. You don't do that anymore. You better be ready to play. Third and seven for the Rainbows from the 30. Pressure being chased. Has to unload and it is caught, but he's out of bounds. Harding caught it at the 40, but he was so several yards out of bounds, so it'll be a punting situation. Now, if you got some courage, you fake punt and do something here because you're deep in your own territory, and this is when people don't think you'll fake punt. Now, if you don't believe that you're going to get the ball back and the BYU is going to run sweep, sweep, sweep with Willis, you fake punt and you do something. Every team has it. it boils down to pulling the trigger. Mike Johnson deep, Steve Wilson back to kick. Wilson, the senior from Prescott, Arizona. Snap a little low, but he's got it, gets the kick away. Picks it very high. Fair catch the signal, and Johnston handles it nicely at the 32. So BYU will bring in the offensive unit right there. Cougar ball. First down. Jamal Willis straight ahead for four. Tackled by Junior Faabai. The senior out of Ocean Hyde has had a good football game. Well, Jamal's going to sleep well tonight because he's going to get it most of the evening now. There's nine minutes left. I don't really look for BYU to throw it much. Second down, a little over seven to go for a BYU first down. They'd like to just keep that clock going now as they lead the Rainbows 13 to 12. Sweet formation. Got a slot to the left. A little flex to the right. And we'll leave the lead blocker. Let's see if that's what they do. The Cougars are protesting something. I think that... Uh, would it have to do with the the down clock or the clock? I don't know what that signal is. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, I guess the clock kept going while that was happening. So they're going to have to set it back to 8.56. Now you get in trouble when you're at home and you uh, you cheat the home team out of time and they cheated them out of 15 seconds. That's how you lose your, jo your job as a clock operator. <laughs> <coughs> Second down play coming for the Cougars at BYU. They're near midfield. Second and about seven. Well, they've widened out. Looks like they'll throw. Walsh fakes the handoff. He is back to throw. Does throw. Completes it to Jamal Willis. To the 50. Foot race. 40. Down to the 30. And out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So the big fullback 
coming out of the backfield, and a big gainer, Lindsey Yao, stopped him. This looks like the Jamal Willis we saw two years ago before he had so many injuries. This is a well-executed play. They fake the draw to Himuli, and then Willis on a little swing pattern. And look at him run. Long strider. He'll take you on right there, too. Boy, you're in great shape now, thanks to Jamal Willis. Cougar first down on the Rainbow 25. Out the wire in motion. Now he's checking off, Jay. They changed the play. Back to throw. Dancing around, he have to eat it. Well, that was almost destined to fail from the start. Cox and Favai making the stop for the Rainbows. Cougars never uh, really got that one in sync. That's one of those plays where you're instructed, well, if you see this, yell the name of a state or something. <laughs> and he did, but he lost his friends. Well, they only lose three out of it, maybe four. Now it's second and 14 for BYU. Cougars ahead by one point. This is Hay Mooley. Oh, what a block. Hey, Mooley runs it to the 22-yard line. Guess who on the block? Was it Pilgrim? Isn't it always? <laughs> I'd sound like his press agent, but I've seen a lot of pulling guards, and the guards will take you to the football. You want to have some fun, instead of watching the quarterback at home, you watch the guards. Look at this guard. You want to see a pancake? How'd you like to see this guy bearing down on you? About 270 right pounds. There. Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh, that would hurt. Big play. Lindsey Yow. He took out on it. Third down for BYU and six. Got to make sure you get it to the middle of the field. It's very important to give Louder a chance. Takes a run. He's going to throw into the middle of the field and completes it to the 10 yard line. Nice pass from John Walsh. That is Kaipo McGuire who caught it and Carlos Anderson tackled him. But BYU's got a first down. That was a big one. Yeah, it really was. Well done by Walsh who hadn't had a the kind of night he wants, particularly when he missed Nowatsky on a two-point effort just a moment ago. But he's got a chance with 7-13 left to really get something rolling now. BYU first and 10. It would be possible to make a first down without scoring a touchdown. And about the 10 and a half yard line. That's Jamal Willis, and Jamal does not have much this time. Slips inside and gains a couple. Clock continues to uh, roll. Jay, they sold uh, 48,352 tickets. Turnstile actual count 46 778. And that's one thing, as you mentioned, that Coach Wagner can be proud of. It started with Dick Toomey. Draw. And, uh, you know, once I got in the whack and everything, it's become a big deal over here. It's really well done. Cougars have second and nine on about the nine. Here's Walsh to pass. Does pass, it's complete. Inside the five-yard line to his tight end, Chad Lewis. Ellis tackled him. And here's the situation with 6'11 left. It's almost a chippy field goal. But if you can get in and score, you figure the worst, the worst-case scenario is that you get tied. Hawaii would have to score, and then uh, uh, they'd have to go for two, and you know all that would have to happen if you could jump up by eight here. Line of scrimmage is just inside the five, so it's third down about four and a half for BYU. And the crowd doing what they've done effectively in this game. They're making it hard for BYU to hear. Here's Walsh's pass. Touchdown, Nowatsky. And he was not the primary receiver. Well, let's see what the flag is. They wanted to throw the fade, as you mentioned, Jay, on the left side. See if it's holding on the left side. That's where the flag is. Boy, I'll tell you, Walsh is upset. It goes against BYU. Yep, well, it will not count. McGuire apparently was in motion illegally. Anyway, it's an illegal procedure penalty against BYU. And rather than a touchdown, they will have the penalty and have to try it again. That was a nice throw, too, to Nowatsky. Yeah, he, as you mentioned, Jay, he was not the primary, but... None of that matters. The main thing now is you got to be sure that you give your kicker 
a field goal opportunity if you don't score here. Don't take a big, big time loss here. Well, it's third and goal from the 10 yard line. Here's Walsh, does throw, completes it to Chad Lewis. Chad is down at the three yard line. Not enough for the first down. Rob Stewart tackled him, so BYU is now inside the three, leading by one point. And we have to make the decision. Well, you got a left footed kicker on the right hash. Does that matter? I don't know. I'm not left footed. <laughs> They're talking it over. Here's why they make the big bucks, Jay. You and I just sit up here. Yeah, here comes the. Uh, and this is a decision that Lavelle Edwards makes. Circumstances like this, they talk it over, and then he's the one that decides. And he sent the kicker in. Remember, one has been blocked. Came from the right side. Cougars ahead by a point. With a little over four to go. Just under five, I should say. BYU calls timeout. They don't have enough guys. They don't have a blocking back on the left side. Oh, somebody's going to get chewed out. So the Cougars call a timeout. I think was that uh, Nowatsky who called it. There's timeout on the field. BYU leading by one. This is the Blue and White Sports Network. And an injury update. Uh, Kubiyama for Hawaii is out of the game with a concussion. And Fa'ave has a bruised right knee but will be able to return. So here is Water trying to kick it from the 10 yard line. In other words a 20 yard field goal attempt. But it's from the right hash. The right side. Down the kick is up. And they did block it again. Hawaii blocked it. That's two blocked field goals in this game. Boy, they're good at that. This is something they really work on. Every coach works with special teams. And what looked like a lock when the Watson caught the touchdown pass, called back with 4.36 left. A field goal now would win it for the Bows. There it is. See where the pressure comes. They overload the right side. I believe it's 22. Let's see if we can pick it up. It is 22. Look at him jump. Look at the effort right there. No, it isn't 22. It comes from the Might side. Be 82. Split a seam, and we have a horse race. That'd be Ellison. Well, the Rainbows have the ball then on the BYU 20-yard line, first and 10. We have 4:36 to play, and BYU leads by one point. Freitas, a quarterback. Remember, he's the option guy. He fakes the handoff. Wait. He may have taken too long. The play has been stopped. He was running the option that time. Fake to the first man, but kept it. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Five yard penalty. First set. That puts it first and 15. From the 15. Freitas still at a quarterback. Quick pass. Caught on the sidelines by Kennedy. Knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard, uh, 25-yard line by Jamel Reed for BYU. 427 left. The exact same situation we saw two years ago. That block field goal makes it a horse race. What even makes it a bigger horse race is the penalty on the touchdown pass to Nowatsky. Second and five for Hawaii from the 25. Well, they got good this time. Freitas. And uh, Mike Utapali timed it perfectly, and they didn't. Uh, they just couldn't stop it. They've had center problems all night long. The snap has been a little slow. People are getting off the ball. Now watch. You see people get off the ball, but the, the football isn't back there yet. It's not illegal because nobody's offside, but it's just half count late. That killed them. Killed their timing. Now you got a throwing situation. And it's third and seven for Freitas. Read the middle backer, Jay. Runs the option. There's the pitch back. They try to turn the corner, but caught it. It's fumbled. They got it down. 
I, did they rule it down? Okay. Pollock and Cook for BYU right on top of the uh, Poneski. And now it's a fourth down play. Let's we'll see what they want to do here now. You want to give the football back to, to BYU? They're going to, it, it would appear, but you really got to be careful here. If I'm Bob Wagner, I'm thinking, I don't know if I can stop that big 29 on a sweep. Yeah, this is a prevent. Well, it's fourth and eight. They do have John. Well, they've got two men back deep. Yeah, but look at the set for BYU. They've got five people up, four down. This is real safe to make sure. It's good strategy. Wilton has it. He will kick it. Got it away. Fair catch the signal. Oh, he juggled it, but he caught it. Oh, that's Mike Johnston. Got it twice. Here's what you got to do, Jay. You got to make them use their timeouts by picking up a couple of first downs. Don't let them save their timeouts. What do we have? 2.54 to go. And what? Hawaii is trying to see. With timeouts, they have two left. Both ball clubs with two left. And your key here is to keep it in bounds if you do run the sweep. BYU leading 13 to 12. Following tonight's game, watch for the Sheraton play of the game presented by Sheraton Hawaiian Resorts. First and 10, BYU at midfield. They'll run it to Hamuli. Skirting to the outside over the 50 to the 45. And he's down to the 42 yard line. There's one of those first downs. Last well, run by Hamuli. You know what? But he did it too quick. <laughs> right. Fave and uh, Ross, the tacklers. <laughs> Holly Rowe has a report. Holly? After that illegal motion call that voided the touchdown, John Walsh got all up in uh, Kaipo McGuire's face, pointing and yelling at him. Then we came and stood behind him behind the bench. He's still complaining about McGuire. Went up to Robbie Bosco, the coach, and complained about it. He's not too happy about uh, his receiver not thinking on the play. All right, Holly. First and 10, BYU on the Hawaii 41-yard line. Cougars will head by one with 2.28 to go in this football game. This is Hamilly. And Hamilly puts his head down and follows the football. And Hawaii's got it. That's just what you didn't want to happen for BYU. Fave knocked it out of his hand. This happened two years ago. That's the third fumble tonight for number 15. He's had a tough night. And now the BYU defense going to have to decide this football game. If, uh, anyway, here it is. Here's the draw. The call is a good one. And there's some room. And Hamuli with the ball in his left hand puts his head down. Look at this. He yanks it out. Well done by uh, the Bows. Well, they, they have 2.17 to go, and they have the ball on their own 36-yard line. And here's where you need something if you're Hawaii on the very first play. you got to do something that nobody has seen. It's Glover at quarterback. Glover sprinting, setting up. Now he'll have to run it, and the Cougars get to him. They knock him down at the 30-yard line. The ball is fumbled, but it was down already. Not a real good-looking play. The clock it. continues to run. Corey Cook made the big hit for BYU. This is the football game right here now. There are, there are no more punts. This is it. This is do or die for the Bows. They'll come to the line of scrimmage. They lost six on that one, so make it second and 16. One-on-one -on -one coverage on this side. That's what you're trying to find if you're Hawaii. There's Glover being chased. Gets the pass off, completes it to the 38-yard line, which would bring up third down and eight. Gerald Lacey caught it. Probably going to have to hit something in the middle of the field, though, if they're going to pick up the first here. A minute 28 and the clock running. Now, let's see, they get it stopped. They do call a timeout with a minute 21 to play in the game. The Hawaii Rainbows will have the ball on their own 38-yard line where they will face third down and about seven yards. We've had about six turnovers in this football game as both sides have uh, had, had some first game problems. And it's down to uh, what it, it always seems to be with Hawaii and BYU. Jay, last year in Provo, Hawaii's got a chip shot. The football game is over. Hits the crossbar. So it's going to be a tie. And it doesn't wind up a tie. BYU comes back and they win it. They hit, a, I think, a deep one to Gray. Gray, right. Took it all the way down to about the 25. And then they didn't hesitate at all. They just strike the field goal and Harry kicked it. And BYU won a game that looked like they had lost. It's really a great series. I hope a lot of people have stayed up and are staying with the ball game because this 
It's been a tough, hard-fought defensive battle. Check out the fumble. This was a draw after Hamouli had picked up the first down. Well, uh, here it is. And Hamouli had good yardage right on schedule. And the ball just comes out. All right, third down, about six and a half, seven yards to go for the Hawaii Rainbows with a minute 24 to play in this football game and BYU ahead 13 to 12. You would think that uh, maybe not this play, but you got to put it up deep and take your chances here. That's how they got back in the football game two years ago. Got to fly. And here's Glover back to pass. There it is. Throws it way deep. Got a man down there, and it is incomplete. He was open, too. Oh, boy, and that's the same young man. Isn't that Harding? At the 13-yard line, he dove for the pass and couldn't quite come up with it. It was. That was Harding. That's a great call. They run the post. Matthew Hamlin. Harding. Ball is just overthrown. Harding gives it his all. And that doesn't feel real good Ooh on the turf. Wee. Now you got to throw. You got to throw something, pick up the first. Can't take a chance on that pass. That was a, that was a, a good call, though, by Johnson. Well done. Fourth down and still seven for the Rainbows. Let's see if BYU sends Ross up the middle now. Here's Glover. They try to get to him. Good protection. Wide open. Oh, and they complete. Missed they missed him. They missed him. He was wide open, too. That was Veneri. In fairness to uh, Glover, BYU put pretty good pressure on him. So here's the situation, Jay. One time out left, you touch it down, you get into your safety. Here it is. Glover had him open. Boy, I'll tell you what, did he have him open? That's a little drag pattern. And it just doesn't happen. So BYU will open up with a win. You know, Irv, Hawaii could say, are we going back to that 10-game stretch a while back? You know, when BYU would come yeah. over here and, uh, oh, there's a pass drop in the end zone. They won by one. There were a lot of things that happened that way. Tonight, well, either team could say that. What if? Now watch, uh, there'll be somebody real deep here. The reason for this is when the Philadelphia Eagles pick up a Joe Pasarsic fumble and ran it into the end zone. So now there's always somebody way back and nobody messes around. Herman Edwards that day made history when he picked up that fumble. There's the last time out. Now you just touch it down two more times. A minute six showing on the clock. So this is a wild one. But both coaches are going to show their kids a lot of things. John Walsh comes over to the sidelines to talk to his coaches, make sure that they know exactly what they're going to do right now. Talking to Robbie Bosco. Holly, Holly Rowe. The defense is on the sidelines right now having an absolute celebration. The coordinators have come over. All of the defensive players, uh, a big triumph for them tonight. The question marks about this defensive team have been answered. Now it's just the offense that will have a few questions above their heads. And I think one of those, in fairness to BYU, would be what a difference it would have made having a Doman in the game. I didn't see one uh, post pattern. D didn't see a lot of real speed out there. Doman gives you that. Now, Doman does not face surgery. He has a stretch in his knee and a bruise. And I'm sure one of the factors here, but you know this, is playing on this turf. Uh, this this could be hard on you. Uh, if they could get through this without having to use it, they wanted to do so. Yeah. You talk about turf. We, I mentioned the Philadelphia Eagles. Jay, Philadelphia, that, that home field, you might as well just go out and play on uh, uh, H-10 out here in uh, Honolulu. I mean, that's how hard it is. Now, BYU has called a timeout. Walsh didn't know it was being called. I, I don't know. Were they short a player or something? Well, the game is over unless something crazy happens. Well, we've seen some crazy things happen here, but I don't want to well, be if you, here. Well, if you can accept the snap, you can't get beat because you're going to touch it down. All you got to do is two more times. Walsh dances around a bit and then goes down back at the 46-yard line. There's a danger when you go back that far that you uh, get nailed there. Clock running with 53 seconds. And as you say, there's nothing they can do unless BYU uh, makes a tremendous error. Although, you know, one of Lavelle's first years coaching over at Colorado State, they simply had to protect one like this and lost it. Now, the Rams came back and scored. Tied, it tied the score. 
And then uh, there was a lot of confusion when they tried their extra points. Some thought they'd made it, some thought they didn't. Anyway, it stood a 33 33 tie on a fumble on a play like this. Yeah, people really practice this now. The old, see, that's what you get concerned about. Dive bomber comes in on that side. That's a football game, and I'll tell you what, both teams ought to get together in the middle and uh, and say job well done because it wasn't pretty. There were a lot of errors, and we usually have that in the first game. But both teams played very, very hard. Oh, what a throw! As you just pointed out, Irv, not the uh, the best game that the two teams will play this year, but still it was an exciting game as BYU has defeated Hawaii by a score of 13 to 12. I'm Joel Bishop. And I'm Shannon Engeman. Join us for a glimpse into the lives of members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We'll take a look at the accomplishments and even some of the challenges of both well-known personalities and common everyday people just like you and me. We'll see how their devotion to the restored gospel affects their decisions, their actions, and their relationships with others. Discover what true heroes are made of in Bernie Fisher, Everyday Hero, on the next LDS Lives.